Hello friends. This is Fanfic Adventure. How are you all? So in this video, we will see. What if Naruto reincarnated as Son of Time God? Lightning Thief Naruto x Percy Jackson crossover. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time, let's begin the story. Naruto Uzumaki was just taken out of his world, he was taken out of his world. It was just a few days after the 4th Shinobi World War, Naruto was just walking around in Konoha minding his own business well, a lot of girl were asking for his autograph and giving him presents until he suddenly disappeared in thin air. He was unconscious from whatever took him of course, but when he woke up, dot his mind was foggy. All he remembered was his name, his jutsus, his powers. He didn't remember anything else, his memory was, erased, maybe. Naruto groaned clutching the side of his head, where am I? He asked his self. His blue eyes scanned his surroundings. It was dark with dim light. He jumped at the sight of what looked like a golden coffin. He stood up but stumbled, whoa, he muttered at the coffin walking towards it. He now stood in front of it. His hand slowly reached out to touch it but then there was a surge of energy that shocked the blonde causing his eyes to flash from blue to gold. He grunted clutching his chest, his teeth gritted together and he let out a scream of pain. A dark voice ranged through his ears making him to squeeze his eyes shut. Finally, my son has come to receive his training, growled the voice, hopefully you won't betray me like the others. And if you do, I can always destroy you. I brought you here for a reason, my son. Naruto finally stood straight facing the coffin with a small frown, what's the reason? The voice chuckled darkly, you have a destiny. You are a part of the great prophecy, he revealed to his confused son. That's cool and all but, uh, what's a great prophecy? Naruto asked curiously. The prophecy of where it decides the fate of Mount Olympus, the voice answered sounding annoyed, I shall bestow it upon you. A half-blood of the eldest gods shall reach twenty against the odds. And see the world in endless sleep the hero's soul, cursed blade shall reap. A single choice shall end his days Olympus to preserve or raise. The child of time must decide the light or dark shall be his pride. Naruto blinked. So am I the half-blood of one of the eldest gods? Plus who are the eldest gods? You are the child of time, the voice answered. The eldest gods are my sons and your older brothers who betrayed me. Zeus, Hades and Poseidon, they overthrew me. Chopped me into pieces. But you. Dot you are the son, the child I have yearned for. You must avenge me my son. It is your destiny. You will train, to become stronger, when you are at your full power. Dot you must travel to camp half-blood. Okay. Dot but, father, what's your name? I am the Titan Lord, Kronos. Titan of Time, Evil and Harvest, the voice revealed as Kronos. It's been a year. Naruto has trained and trained and trained. He's become stronger, more handsome one might even say. But Kronos, his father, decided it was time for his youngest son to go to Camp Half-Blood. That is where he is going now. No, mom. Screamed a young boy around 16. He had obsidian black hair and bright sea-green eyes. A angry roar filled the area. Naruto felt himself suddenly appear behind the monster in a beam of gold light. This surprised the boy. The monster wrapped a big hand around the woman's throat and she dissolved into golden dust. A smirk formed on the blonde's lips. Anger and hate filled the boy's sea green eyes that turned dark. The boy wanted to destroy that thing. He uncapped his ballpoint pen turning it into a celestial bronze sword. He screamed charging at the monster who balled its fist and drove it into the boy's stomach causing him to cough out blood and to fly into a tree and hit the ground roughly. The boy clutched his stomach wincing in pain coughing. His vision grew blurry and his breathing turned heavy, his eyes shut going unconscious. Percy! cried another boy who had goat legs. Oh, he was satyr. This is the first time Naruto's seen a satyr before, he was quite amazed. Naruto sighed holding out his hand. In the palm of his hand formed a bright orange sphere of chakra, he ran in front of the monster getting a good look at it. It was a minotaur. The minotaur looked both surprised and angry at seeing the blonde before it could strike the teen, it wailed out in pain at feeling the sphere of chakra going through its abdomen. The minotaur disintegrated into what looked like sand. 
The satyr was in awe staring at Naruto taking up his appearance. His blonde hair looked like it was cropped short and he had a great build. He wore a black headband tied around his forehead, he wore a black uniform style jacket with an orange zipper that has several buttons on the waist and sleeves, he has a red armband around his left bicep with a scythe on it, his right forearm was wrapped from his bicep to his fingertips, he wore orange pants with a kanai pouch wrapped around his right thigh and black ninja boots. The son of Kronos stood on his feet turning around to face the satyr who swallowed. Naruto fell forward hitting the ground with hardly causing dust from the ground to fly around his body. He passed out. The satyr acted quick dragging both the black-haired boy and Naruto into camp. A pair of blue eyes that sparkled like gold snapped open, the eyes belonged to Naruto who sat up with a small frown. His eyes scanned his surroundings, he seemed to be in some kind of tent and he was laying in small medical bed. His ears perked up at hearing groaning from a bed beside him his head whipped towards the noise to see. Dot the boy that was fighting the minotaur. The boy was beginning to wake up. His sea green eyes fluttered open and his hands rubbed the sleep out of them while a yawn passed through his lips. He sat up groaning more clutching his side his eyes scanned the area with a blank expression. This is the first time Naruto has seen anyone other than his father before, what should he say? Uh, yo. He suddenly grinned holding out his fist. A grin. And, yo. Where'd that come from? Then he held out his fist. It kind of just popped into his mind like. He's done and said these things before. Crazy, right? The boy quickly turned to Naruto jumping from hearing him. He stared at the blonde's fist and hesitantly bumped it with his own with a questionable look. Yeah, um, hi. He took back his fist at the same time as Naruto. Wait a minute. You're that blonde guy from that night. Naruto couldn't help but smile just a little, and you're that dark haired guy that got beat by that bastard of a minotaur. The green eyes boy blushed in embarrassment. T that thing, was bigger and buffer than me. He gestured to himself making a point, it isn't my fault that I lost. That wasn't a fair fight. I beat it and I'm just like you, taller, handsome and more built except. Thanks, I feel much better now, the boy deadpan with sarcasm. Naruto chuckled lightly at the boy's expression. Naruto Uzumaki, Naruto introduced his self. He had to admit that this was new for him. He never really smiled, laughed or used slang words before. That's what happens when you live with the Titan Lord. Percy Jackson. Thank the gods that you too are awake. Cried a voice. Another boy ran in stopping in between Naruto and Percy. This was the other boy from the fight as well. Let's see, he's wearing a bright orange shirt that says. Camp Half Blood. He's has on blue jeans and some converse high tops. Good look. But on the fight he was a satyr. Maybe he's hiding his goat legs in the high tops and blue jeans. He must be hurting. The son of Kronos also noticed that the satyr cradled a shoebox in his arms. He looked over at Naruto with a thankful look as if he saved his life. You saved my life. Thanks. The satyr shot him a small smile. Saving someone's life? Kronos always told his son to destroy lives and stuff. Naruto frowned some imagining his father frowning down at him in shame, yet again, his stomach is burning in what feels like. Happiness. Saving someone's life almost felt better than destroying one's. Yes, well, I'm Naruto Uzumaki. You are? Oh, right, forgot to introduce myself. Grover Underwood, the satyr, Grover, held out his hand but slowly took back at seeing the whiskered boy frown at it. His mocha-colored fingers drummed against the shoebox nervously. Anyways, I went back to the hill to get this. He opened the box showing the boys what was inside of it. Laying inside were two minotaur horns, black and white. Thought you two might want it. Percy reached in the box to grab the white horn while Naruto took the black eyeing it with proudness. His first kill. Awesome. Everyone in camp is talking about you, Naruto. How you killed the minotaur. Grover breathed out in amazement, that was amazing with that, er, orange circle thing you did. What's it called? He asked curiously. He also looked as if he were jumping up and down on his feet like an excited child. Satyrs these days. Naruto grunted shifting in the small bed planting his feet softly on the ground before answering, Rasengan. That's what it's called. It's my signature jutsu. Percy arched a brow. Jutsu? Like ninjas and other stuff? Naruto nodded. Yes. Exactly. A ninja and he's also a demigod? That's a nice combination, 
Grover thought still amazed, until Percy asked something that made his facial expression drop. My mom. Is she really? Percy sounded as if he were fighting back tears. This made Naruto raise a golden brow. Grover looked down ashamed and saddened. He was sniffling as well. I am so sorry, Percy. It's all my fault. I'm the world's worst satyr. He stomped his foot on the ground so hard that his high top fell off. His eyes widened at this along with Percy's. Naruto blinked scratching his left temple in confusion at seeing Grover's foot. It was wrapped in styrofoam and there was also a hoof-shaped hole. Oh, sticks. He cried and there was a rumble of thunder outside. He struggled putting the styrofoam back on still sniffling. This is new. I've always wondered what a satyr would like sniffling like a mere child, Naruto thought. He then groaned at seeing what seemed to be him as a child covered in blue, white, red and purple paint stains. He wore a light blue shirt with a red swirl in the middle of it, he was barefoot and wore light brown shorts. Tears rushed down his cheeks as he wished for parents to love him. Be with him. Whoa! Grover caught Naruto who panted with his forehead covered in sweat. He almost fell out of the bed. But Grover caught him just in time before he struck the floor head first. Grover laid the blonde in the bed slowly with a soft sigh. You have to be careful. Okay. Try not to strain yourself too much, he advised. Naruto nodded lightly panting. He used his hands to wipe the sweat from his forehead. What was that mental image? A flashback. He didn't remember any of that happening before when he was a child. Matter of fact, he didn't remember anything from his childhood. Whenever he asked Kronos about his childhood he would tell his son not to focus on the past but the future. And the blonde knows better than to argue with his father. Here, Grover handed him a glass of what looked like apple juice, but Naruto knew what it really was. It was nectar. He never had any before but Kronos told him about it. It was the food of the gods, it'll make you feel better. Naruto took the glass from him. Grover also handed a glass to Percy adjusting the straw for him. The two boys glanced at each other before taking a sip. Percy's eyes widened at the taste as did Naruto's. Nectar really was the food of the gods. It was amazing. It tasted like chocolate chip cookies. The two gulped it down quickly licking their lips at the taste. Naruto felt his strength returning to him. He felt powerful. That meant a good thing. Adrenaline and power coursed through his veins. Then Grover asked, was it good? Percy nodded sighing wishing for more, while Naruto spoke, it was delicious. The most tasty thing I have ever tasted before in my life. Never tasted nectar before. Grover raised a brow, how did you know it was nectar? He questioned. Naruto realized his slip up but decided to go with it, he did the smartest thing any teenager would do. He stammered but shrugged. Grover waved it off but asked something else that made both Naruto and Percy feel guilty, was the nectar good? Sorry, Percy said, I should have let you taste. Er, yeah, sorry, Naruto mumbled embarrassed, he never felt guilty about anything. Grover's eyes got wide. No, that's not what I meant, really, I just, wondered is all. Chocolate chip, Percy supplied to his best friend, my mom's, homemade. Naruto's shoulders tensed at that. A mom. A mother. He never heard of one of those before. But from what he's told, they're supposed to be loving and caring. He asked his father who his mother was, and he told him that his mother was this beautiful red-headed mortal woman who was a kunoichi who died when she gave birth to him. He then told his son to never ask about that ever again. But he did say one other thing. Dot his stepmother was Rhea. Percy saw the look on the blonde's face. Hasn't your mom baked you any cookies? I don't have one of those, he grumbled narrowing his blue eyes at Percy making the teen flinch uncomfortably. Sorry, um, stepmom? Never met her, dad, Percy asked slowly. Naruto growled and Grover gulped at this, he doesn't bake. Look, I'm just not like you, I don't have a mother and I have never met my stepmother before, it was always my father and I. Percy swallowed his now dry throat at seeing Naruto's blue eyes shine gold like full of anger and sadness. Now it was time to apologize for being such an idiot asking too many questions, sorry, I just didn't know. His now gold eyes shimmered down to blue as they glanced down, whatever. Just don't ask me anything like that ever again, he whispered cracking his knuckles causing Grover to quietly to bleat. Percy had no right to ask personal questions like that. Some people, kids just aren't lucky like him. 
Sure living with the Titan Lord in what looked to be Tartarus for a year was great. Dot, but he wanted his father to love him. He did love him, but, more. Show more affection towards him. His father always told his son that he was his, chosen child, to avenge him, and that one day, they would rule together just like he dreamed. But, maybe that wasn't enough for Naruto. Grover sighed breaking the silence, how do you guys feel? Like I could throw Nancy Bobo fit a hundred yards, Percy answered. Naruto arched a golden brow. Nancy what? Who in the world is that? The dark-haired boy sighed running his fingers through his dark locks feeling good to get away from that. Moment. She's a bully at my school. School, bully, Naruto repeated. He missed out on that kinds of stuff. If a bully did come up to him he would just blast them into ashes, if a bully came to me I'd just blast them into ashes. Problem solved. He smiled with a light chuckle his mood starting to get better. Grover smiled at that as did Percy. Percy and Grover's facial expressions turned dumbfounded. Wait. Blast the bullies into ashes? Er, uh, T that's good, Grover nodded, that's good. I don't think you could risk drinking any more of that nectar. Wait, what do you mean by that? Percy asked totally confused. Naruto nodded confused as well, yeah, if this nectar heals us then why not drink more? We'll be more, ya yeah, know, how do you say it? Awesomer. Grover gingerly took the glasses from them and Naruto pouted. Seriously, what the hell is this world doing to him? He never pouts. This world is freaking evil. Evil. Although he likes evil. Evil in a bad way. Grover held the glasses as if they were dynamite and he sat them on the nearby table. Come on, guys. Chiron and Mr. D are waiting. Naruto smirked evilly. Now is the time I meet you, brother Chiron. Naruto grumbled at seeing that the porch was wrapped all the way around the farmhouse. His eyes glanced over to Percy, who legs were wobbly. When Naruto first jumped out of bed, he was feeling fine. Didn't have to stretches or anything else, that surprised Grover, of course. Grover offered to hold Percy and Naruto's minotaur horn. Percy refused holding it close to his chest while Naruto handed it over to Grover, muttering, Thank you, trusting Grover just a little. Down at the end of the porch, Two men sat across from each other at a card table. And a familiar looking blonde girl was leaning on the porch rail next to them. She looked around Naruto's age but maybe a year or two younger than him. The man facing the two boys was small, but rather porky. He had a red nose, big watery eyes and curly hair so black that it almost looked purple. He looked as if he could swallow half of Tartarus whole and go for seconds. He wore a tiger patterned Hawaiian shirt. Naruto wondered if this guy was really even a god. Yeah, he could tell this loser was a god just by the power he felt. Hard to imagine this loser was even a god. That's Mr. D, Grover murmured to the boys, be polite. The girl, that's Annabeth Chase. She's just a camper but she's been here longer than just about anybody. Percy, you already know Chiron. Percy looked confused and Grover pointed at the man who was seated in a wheelchair. Then the tweed jacket, the thinning brown hair and the scraggly beard. The blonde deadpan. That's Chiron. The great teacher of heroes. How amusing. A centaur wheelchair bounded. Mr. Brunner. Percy cried out. The man Chiron looked at them and smiled. His eyes carried a glint of mischief. Ah, good, Percy, Chiron said and turned to Naruto, and you are the one from the fight, yes? Naruto just stared at his half-brother taking up his features before nodding lightly. Yeah, I'm Naruto, Naruto Uzumaki. A pleasure to meet you, Mr. Uzumaki, Chiron said, now we have four for Pinnacle, he motioned for Percy and Naruto to sit, Naruto to the seat next to his half-brother while Percy was seated next to the porky man. The blonde bit back a small laugh at seeing how uncomfortable the sixteen-year-old felt next to the chubby god. Percy swallowed when. What was his name? Er, Mr. D. Yeah. He swallowed when Mr. D faced him with bloodshot eyes and heaved a great sigh that made Naruto scrunch his nose, oh, I suppose I must say it. Welcome to Camp Half-Blood. You. His eyes now faced Naruto who knitted his brows together, hello. Hi. Whatever. There. Now. Don't expect me to be glad to see you. Cause if you do. Well you're just wasting your precious time. Uh, yeah, thanks. Percy scooted away from Mr. D who didn't seem to either notice or glad. Naruto studied Mr. D and Chiron. 
he couldn't believe that he would actually meet one of his traitorous brothers. This was one hell of a day for Kronos' youngest child. But one thing was floating around in his mind, you're a god aren't you? Mr. D glanced at him with a roll of the eyes. Wow. One of you are smart, this is the first time someone's realized this. If you're wondering if Mr. D's attitude pissed off Naruto, well it did. Annabeth? Chiron called out to the blonde girl. She came forward and introduced them, this young lady nursed you back to health, Percy, Naruto. Annabeth, my dear, why don't you go check on Naruto and Percy's bunk? We'll be putting them in cabin 11 for now. The blonde girl named, Annabeth, nodded and said, sure, Chiron. Naruto noticed that he was inches taller than this Annabeth girl but she was just inches taller than Percy, she looked athletic, which surprised both boys. She had deep tan skin and curly honey blonde hair, her steel gray eyes were intimidating like they were analyzing ways to defeat both Naruto and Percy in a fight. She looked unlike anything he's seen before, and that's saying something since he was in Tartarus for a year and doesn't remember his past. But in Naruto's eyes, she was. Er, pretty. He looked to his side to notice that Percy thought the same because of his blush that he failed to hide. To be honest, Naruto knew nothing about crushing on a girl before, he wondered what it felt like. Annabeth glanced at the horn in Percy's hand then back at him. He expected her to say something to him. Instead she said, you drool when you're asleep. Then she ran off with her blonde hair flying behind her. Naruto snickered turning to Percy who now was blushing of embarrassment, I think you have something on the corner of your mouth. S shut up. Percy glared at the blonde who narrowed his blue eyes at him. Percy gulped thinking that Naruto would fight him but the older boy just shrugged looking at Chiron. So, uh. He said very anxious to change the subject, you work here Mr. Brunner? He questioned his teacher. Not Mr. Brunner, Chiron said, I'm afraid that was a pseudonym, you may call me Chiron. Teacher of heroes, Naruto mumbled bitterly but hid it. The wheelchair bounded centaur turned to the blonde with a tender smile, right you are, my boy. Naruto stared at Chiron for a second as the two locked eyes as if they were trying to read each other. It was silent for a moment and Mr. D raised an eyebrow at seeing the two, but the silence was broken by none other than Percy. Okay, he said causing Naruto to look away from his older half-brother who looked away as well. The dark-haired teen turned to the director, and Mr. D? Does that stand for something? Mr. D stopped shuffling the card to look at Percy as if he just did something wrong. Young man, names are very powerful. You just don't go around using them for no apparent reason. Oh. Right. Sorry, Percy mumbled slightly looking away to hide the ting of pink on his cheeks. He was totally embarrassed once more. I must say, Percy, Chiron broke in, I'm glad to see you alive. It's been a long time since I've made a house call to a potential camper. I'd hate to think I've wasted my time. House call? The dark-haired teen asked and Naruto arched a golden brow listening to what his half-brother was talking about. It could be useful. My year at Yancey. To instruct you. We have satyrs at most schools, of course, keeping a lookout. But you, Naruto, we have never sensed you before. Naruto bit his bottom lip. I was, uh, homeschooled. That is why. Dot you have not. Ya no. Sensed me. Er, may I? Tour this place some. Chiron nodded lightly. You may. Mr. D didn't even look at Naruto when he snickered and said, just don't stumble upon the Aphrodite girls they'll eat someone like you alive. Naruto couldn't help but frown at hearing that. He was the son of Kronos. He could handle some Aphrodite girls. He heard about them from Kronos. He thought that their mother was just a whore since she slept with different men almost every day. Naruto thought it was some kind of routine she had. He hoped that her daughters weren't the same. The blonde murmured that he would see both Grover and Percy later. The two nodded but Percy looked as if he wanted to tag along with the blonde. He pocketed his hands walking away from the others with his lips puckered to the side scanning some of Camp Half-Blood. He admired all of the cabins and everything else. This brought a smile to his face, if Kronos saw that smile. Naruto would have gotten an earful from his father who he loved dearly. He had to focus on one thing, and one thing only, gee. Oof. He was knocked right out of his thoughts as he bumped into to someone. He caught the person before they could fall. His blue eyes met a pair of dark blue eyes that seemed to have a glow in them. His eyes took up the person's features. It was a girl. 
roughly around 16 or 17. She had silky black hair that stopped at her lower back, she had a bit of pink eyeliner on and a shade of pink lipstick that made her lips look kissable. All in all. Dot she was the most gorgeous girl Naruto's ever seen. And that was saying something since he didn't know any girls, except for Annabeth who just met. Something happened to the 18-year-old. A tinge of pink formed on his whiskered cheeks. The girl backed off Naruto some rubbing her arm in embarrassment. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Naruto felt his jaw drop at how beauty no, gorgeous she was, gorgeous didn't even begin to describe her. He had to straighten up, he was the child of Kronos after all. So he sucked in the air and exhaled it out feeling his cheeks burn up even more. So he said something any teenaged boy in his predicament would say, and no, it was totally my fault, I was thinking and I was being an idiot, s so. Uh, er, um, hi. I'm Naruto, Naruto Uzumaki. He held out his hand with a nervous smile. The girl giggled and shook his hand with a tint of pink on her cheeks, Selena Bergard, nice to meet you, Naruto. The two kept shaking hands liking the warmth of their hands touching. But they flushed at seeing they were still shaking and took their hands back quickly. The son of Kronos didn't know how to respond about finding himself blushing over a girl. But he bit his tongue after feeling his heart throb. Was he seriously starting to crush on someone? So, um. His eyes landed on the necklace around her neck. He mentally counted the beads on there, you've been at camp for five years? He asked wanting to start a conversation with this pretty girl. Selena fiddled with her necklace before nodding with a small smile. Yeah. I came here when I was twelve a few summers ago. I was in the Hermes cabin for a week before my mother claimed me. Who's your mother? Aphrodite, goddess of love, Selena answered with a shrug as if it were no big deal. The whiskered teen couldn't believe it, he was crushing on Aphrodite girl who didn't even act like she was Aphrodite's child. He expected her to be stuck up, snobby and other stuff, but here she is acting like a normal teenaged girl. This made Naruto, somehow, like her even more. The blush never left his cheeks. Her kind blue eyes widened as she snapped her fingers, I remember now, you're the guy who defeated that minotaur with the other boy and Grover. You're the talk of the camp. She then bit her lip and blushed tucking a strand of her hair behind her ear, that was really cool of you, really. Naruto couldn't help but have this urge to grin and wrap his arm around his head, sadly, he did. It was no big deal. I saw the minotaur and destroyed it using my incredible ninjutsu powers. Ninjutsu? Selina blinked in confusion, wait, dot you mean you're a ninja? Imhum. And guessing by your expression. I'm probably the first to ever step foot in Camp Half Blood, yes? Selena nodded awestruck. This was absolutely the first time she's met a ninja before. She had so many questions. So many that she could be mistaken for a child of Athena. Every time her eyes met his or looked at his face, she couldn't help but blush. He was hot, she just prayed that he wasn't a son of Aphrodite, now that would suck. Think you could show me some of your moves? Why, of course, Naruto said. He made some quick hand signs and two duplicates of himself popped up beside him. The duplicates held out their hands, in their palms were spheres of orange-like chakra. Selena's eyes widened and a grin formed on her lips, the Rasengan. A jutsu created by my father. He told me when I was younger that I couldn't perform with one hand like he could. I had to create clones to help me create it. It wasn't always orange, it used to be blue. Amazing jutsu, really. No kidding. The daughter of Aphrodite whispered staring at the A-rank level jutsu. Naruto held up a hand sign and his duplicates and the Rasengan vanished in a puff of smoke, that's some power you've got there. You know, later, maybe we could hang out. Naruto blinked. Hang out? He's never heard of that. If she meant hanging from then he could probably do it. Dot but she probably didn't mean that. He said, sure. I'd love to, hang out, with you. The daughter of Aphrodite smiled brightly. Okay, then. I'll see you later. Naruto, she winked walking off swaying her hips side to side. The whiskered teen caught himself staring at her perfect rear end. He grinned but then mentally slapped his self. He cleared his throat trying to stop himself from grinning. Naruto's ears perked up at feeling something in the center of his pants growing hard. He swallowed at the feeling. Suddenly, there was a loud explosion that made Naruto jump in surprise. He drew his kanai before running over to where the sound came from. When he got there, 
He deadpanned at seeing Percy standing off to the side while Annabeth, this tough looking girl and what looked to be the girl's posse drenched in water from head to toe. Percy was dry and had a sheepish look on his face. A bit of mud was surrounding Annabeth and the other's feet. Was this the explosion? And did that idiot, Percy, cause it? Yeah, he definitely caused it. He also noticed that Annabeth, the girl and her posse were glaring poisonous daggers at the dark-haired teen. Time for him to go in and the save Percy before he got beaten to a bloody pulp. The tough girl was built like a MMA fighter, a n. I don't like how in the stories Clarice looks a bit man-ish. So I came up with the next big thing, she had long stringy light brown hair and brown eyes. She looked both pretty and tough at the same time. But she was nothing like Selena, but to him, she still looked hot in his books. Before the girl could slam her electric spear through Percy's ribcage, Naruto jumped in between them before his new friend could die. What the hell is going on? He demanded. Annabeth squeezed the water out of the hem of her shirt before speaking up, Percy, here, ran his stupid mouth off to Clarice, knowing her she decided it was initiation time. Clarice and her half-siblings dragged Percy into the bathroom and knelt him down in front of the toilet. She was interrupted yours truly, Percy who frowned at her, the water suddenly shot out of the toilet, wetting everyone else except for me. The tough girl, Clarice, cracked her neck, yeah, she said with a maddening grin, that's why I'm going to run my spear through your damn heart. She yelled and Percy jumped behind the whiskered teen who arched a blonde brow at the younger teen. Naruto then turned his head over to Clarice who was taking up his features. She saw the bandage around his arm figuring he was in a bad fight. It kind of impressed her really. And he was a little cute too. But then she recognized who he was. So you're the samurai that killed the minotaur. Naruto scrunched his nose slightly. He didn't like samurais even though he's never met one before. To him they were warriors who were just wannabe ninjas, yes, but, I'm not a samurai. A ninja is what I am. He extended his hand out with a friendly smile he was somewhat getting used to doing, Naruto Uzumaki. A pleasure to meet you, warrior girl. Clarice first blinked in surprise at the nickname as was Naruto. Something told him he used to always give people he met nicknames. Thanks for the nickname. Clarice said and her lip twitched into a half smile, she shook his hand, Clarice LaRue, she introduced herself and took her hand back but her half smile turned into a glare that was directed at Percy, you had to save Prissy over there, eh? Not surprising since he's such a weak ass. Percy growled sending a glare back to the warrior girl who clutched her spear so tight that her knuckles cracked causing him swallow but keep his glare, because he's tough like that. The blonde glanced behind him and shook his head lightly with an amused look, it's not because he's weak, he has never trained or fight the deadliest of monsters in the nastiest of places. I've seen them all. Him, he pointed at Percy using his thumb, he's been protected from everything evil his entire life up until now. He's finally on his own and has to think for himself now. That is, if he lives long enough to do so. Annabeth gaped at what the shinobi said, he fought the deadliest of monsters. That kind of brought back memories. Percy, of course, was jaw dropped at knowing that. Well, Naruto knew that about him and he didn't even tell him. But Clarice was awestruck and very impressed. If he did one more thing to impress her, she would officially be in love. Naruto wrapped his arms behind his neck and sighed, beginning to walk away. Percy was okay until Clarice was walking over to him with a madwoman grin and sparks dancing around her spear, even in her eyes. Percy swallowed the lump forming in his throat backing away slowly but quickly looked over at the blonde who saved him from the minotaur. Some help, please? Without even looking at Percy, he replied, you caused the problem. So handle the problem. Don't expect someone to help you out of your catastrophes all the time. Cause I don't fight other people's battles. See ya, Percy, Annabeth. He then turned around to wave at Clarice who now blushed which was weird, even for her, catch you later, Clarice LaRue. He then walked away. Annabeth smiled and her eyes averted over to a flushed daughter of Ares. Uh, Clarice? You okay? Clarice didn't answer until a few seconds later. I think I'm officially in love, she whispered dreamily. It was just an hour or two later. That's how long Naruto stayed in camp half blood, just looking around with curiosity in his blue eyes. But he also remembered something that almost slipped his mind. Selena. He was supposed to hang out with her whatever the hell that meant. It didn't sound like anything that would cause him to die, even if it did. 
he was locked and loaded. Naruto remembered Selina saying she was a daughter of Aphrodite so she was probably in the Aphrodite cabin. He felt his stomach tie into a nervous knot which only happened when he either messed up a move he was practicing in front of his father or if he talked back to his father. But this wasn't the cause of either of those things. It was because he really liked this girl. Just thinking about her silky black hair, her beautiful no, gorgeous dark blue eyes and those sweet kissable lips of hers. His heart fluttered but then he clutched his head squeezing his eyes shut as a searing pain shot through his head. Images of him that looked around 12 or 13 were grinning and wore a tint of pink that colored his whiskered cheeks. Naruto's younger self was grinning and blushing at a girl who was seated or standing next to a girl the same age as him staring at boy who were the same ages as they were. The girl had long pink hair and bright green eyes while the boy had black hair tinted with some blue, pale skin and obsidian black eyes. A dreamily smile formed on the pink-haired girl's lips as she stared at the black-haired boy who had on a cool expression that would make tons of girls fall flat over heels just to touch him. The smile that the younger Naruto saw caused him to gasp but grin. Why was he grinning? Did he like a girl who liked someone else once? But he doesn't remember this, so how could he even? I understand now. Thought the younger Naruto, I'm in love with Sakura. Naruto grunted as the pain slowly went away, his eyes shot open and he panted lifting his head back up with a small frown trying to think. W. What's happening to me? Naruto thought, I've never seen these people before. I don't even remember my past. Are my memories coming back to me piece by piece somehow? So how? Why? Hey, Naruto. Naruto spun around on his heels in surprise but then felt butterflies form in his stomach. In front of him was Selina who faced him with a cute smile that caused him to grin and rub the back of his neck. Oh. Er. Hey Selina. I was just about to see you. Cuz you said before that you wanted to. Ya yeah, no. Hang out, and stuff. Selina gently grabbed his hand intertwining her fingers with his. Come on then. She started to run dragging him along with her. I want to show you something amazing. This made Naruto ponder on what she wanted to show him. His face paled since she was a daughter of Aphrodite. Would she make him have a makeover by any chance? No, no, Selina is different. But she was still a daughter of Aphrodite. He silently prayed that it wasn't going to be a makeover. Selina then stopped in front of what looked to be a horse with wings on its back. Naruto stared at the magnificent creature in awe, his brain clicked, he knew what these creatures were. A pegasus, the blonde whispered loud enough for Selina to hear. She gently laid her hand on top of the Pegasus's head stroking it softly. Right you are, Selina said, he's beautiful, don't you agree? Naruto lightly nodded, very. Selina noticed that Naruto's feet were shuffling on the ground as he stood. He chewed his bottom lip nervously staring at the Pegasus, she giggled lightly knowing that he was nervous about touching the Pegasus. So she took his hand and laid it against the Pegasus's neck, don't be so nervous. She won't bite, she said in a joking manner. He glared at her as he rubbed the Pegasus's neck, ha, ha, ha. Very funny, Naruto continued to rub the creature's neck in silence for a few minutes with a gentle smile on his lips. The Pegasus had a peaceful look on its face, it was like the two were slowly becoming friends. What Naruto also caught was that the Pegasus was in different beautiful colors. He felt some kind of bond starting between him and the creature. That's when he soon realized something, hey, he turned to Selina whose eyebrows were raised. Didn't a son of Zeus have a magical pegasus he used to ride all the time? The daughter of Aphrodite hummed in thought. She soon snapped her fingers knowing the answer to the blonde's question, yeah. It was Perseus, in fact. Pegasus was a child of Poseidon and Medusa along with his brother Chrysor. When Perseus cut off Medusa's head, Pegasus and Chrysor sprung out from her neck. Pegasus and Perseus became fast friends and went on many adventures together. But when Perseus died, Pegasus was saddened from the loss of his longtime friend and went into hiding. No one has seen him in millennia. The Pegasus that was being stroked and rubbed by the two glanced down shaking its head lightly, almost in sadness. Naruto's blue gold-like eyes slowly looked down at his feet. This time he was starting to have a flashback with no throbbing or pain. Maybe he was getting used to the pain. But this time he saw himself at the age of either 12 or 13 fighting the black-haired boy from his other flashback. They were sweaty, covered in blood, tired and used up almost all of their chakra. 
The younger Naruto gritted his teeth felt his eyes welling up with tears that soon fell rolling down his cheeks. I swear. The younger Naruto growled. His eyes glared hard at the black-haired boy who had curse marks all over the side of his face and neck, Sasuke. I'll be bring you back, even if I have to beat the living hell out of you. Sasuke. Was that his friend's name? His closest friend? The image swirled around to before the fight even started. Sasuke was standing on top of a humongous statue staring down at the other Naruto who was standing drenched in water below the statue. The two locked eyes as if they were reading each other's minds. Sasuke. The other Naruto whispered to himself, would you really kill me? Naruto. Sasuke hissed quietly loud enough for the blonde to hear, to me. Dot you are my best friend. Then the flashback swirled around to when both Naruto and Sasuke were 16 and they clashed both their favorite jutsus together in anger. Different anger. The anger to save a friend. The anger to kill a friend. But then the flashback swirled to what looked like a war zone. A 17 year old Naruto was fighting Sasuke, and with one gigantic powerful clash of powers, their forearms blew off, but they kept fighting. With one final swirl, the flashback showed Naruto with a soft smile handing Sasuke, who was also smiling back his headband that had a dent like scratch. Naruto sighed, lifting his head up and grinned. That's great, Pegasus cared about Perseus that much. Selena shot him a small smile while the Pegasus was looking at the two with a light smirk. He used his head to lightly nudge Selena in the back, causing her to stumble in Naruto's strong arms. She blushed, still holding on to him, and he smiled softly, locking eyes with her. I, uh, caught ya. Selena cleared her throat, getting off of him, rubbing the back of her neck while he straightened up, puffing his chest out some. Naruto felt his face burning incredibly, he fanned at it, trying to cool it down a bit. But his ears perked up at hearing his name being yelled or called from. Percy. He groaned, turning around to face Percy, who was panting lightly with Annabeth behind him, rolling her gray eyes. She looked as if she was tired of following the poor guy around all day, in his mind, he didn't blame her. Naruto nodded, Percy, he greeted the younger teen who was bending over clutching his knees trying his best to catch his breath. Percy held up his head and nodded resuming what he was doing. The blonde looked over at Annabeth greeting her with a small nod, Annabeth. Annabeth flashed him a small smile followed by a small wave, hi. Percy stood straight wheezing a little then caught his breath, finally. All right, Waterhead and Annie. What you want? Naruto asked the two with a sigh of annoyance rubbing his temple. Percy glared at him for the nickname while Annabeth's eyebrows rose. She hadn't heard anyone call her that in a very long time. Sorry to disturb you on your uh date, the dark haired teen said with a smirk. Selena and Naruto burst out stammering with frowns and grins and nervous smiles glancing at one another. They weren't on a date. They were just hanging out like friends. Nothing more. Okay. Maybe just a little no, nothing more. We were just hanging out, Selena finally said, I wanted to show, Naruto here, the Pegasus. And? Er, you saw it, she grinned at him nervously. Uh, yes, Naruto cleared his throat, it was very, beautiful. Yes, Percy and Annabeth nodded with their arms folded over their chests glancing at each other sharing a small smirk on their lips. Naruto was growing even more nervous which he didn't like. So he muttered, goodbye, quickly to Selina before grabbing Percy and Annabeth's shoulder dragging them far away from Selina waved goodbye. He stopped dragging them to now glare at the two younger teens. You two better have a good damn reason to embarrass me like that. Percy's mouth opened to say something but the look Annabeth shot him caused him to immediately close it. She spoke instead, well, we're having this game called Capture the Flag later on, and I want Percy to be on my team. The older blonde just stared at her like she was crazy. This made her have a small frown on her face. After a minute or two he spoke, what the hell does that have to do with me? He practically screamed. Seriously. He was in the middle of getting to know Selena who was very gorgeous and beautiful and gorgeous. Did he forget to say gorgeous? Annabeth just rolled her eyes, you're a ninja, right? Well I thought that if I had you on my team as well then there would be an easy winning chance, and I love to win. We could tell, Percy thought with a shake of his head, he was really starting to not like this girl. But then again he was also beginning to like just a smidge. You want me on your capture the flag team? Naruto pointed at himself. She nodded like it was obvious, which it was. 
He was now taken aback by that offer. But somehow he couldn't help but pump his fist in the air and plaster a goofy grin on his lips, all right. All people were ever talking about was that stupid bathroom incident. Percy groaned to himself as he saw kids pointing and murmuring things like, toilet water, or, king of the toilets. But Naruto cheered him up a little by whispering to him that the others may be pointing at Annabeth since she was still dripping with water. She took the two boys to the metal room where children of Hephaestus come and forge their own swords. Then they stopped by the arts and craft room where satyrs were sandblasting a giant marble statue of a goat man. Naruto said that the satyrs were acting like common fools. And last but not least the climbing wall. It consisted of two walls that shook violently, dropped boulders, sprayed lava and clashed together if you didn't get to the top fast enough. Percy gulped shaking some but Naruto's eyes sparkled with admiration. He sniffled crying almost. It was the most precious thing he's ever seen in his entire life. The wall reminded him of the time he once fell into a fiery pit somewhere in Tartarus. Good times. Then Annabeth, Naruto and Percy arrived at the canoeing lake. And a trail led to the cabins which Naruto noticed. But one thing was surfacing through his mind. Where will I be sleeping? He questioned Annabeth with a curious look. In the Hermes cabin along with Percy, Annabeth answered. Children of Hermes and all unclaimed children of gods or goddesses stay in there. Since Hermes is the god of travelers he lets the unclaimed children stay in his cabin. Good to know, the son of Kronos murmured distastefully. He now felt a dark pit in his stomach. He wasn't used to sleeping around a huge crowd of people. Sure, in Tartarus he slept with a crowd of monsters surrounding him. Dot but that's different. These are the enemies, he needed to remember that. His bandaged hand clutched his stomach feeling nervous once more. I've got some training to do, Annabeth said flatly, dinner's at 7.30, just follow your cabin to the mess hall. Percy had to say it, he just had to. Annabeth, I'm sorry about the toilet, it was an accident, really. Whatever, it wasn't my fault, she then looked at him with a look that said, idiot, it was your damn fault, his shoulders slumped. Naruto's eyes looked back and forth at the two younger teens. He kept doing this for a while until a grin spread across his lips. Romance problems, I presume? He asked teasingly. Annabeth and Percy turned beet red whipping their heads over at him stammering and screaming. No way. Or, not even if I was getting mauled by a drachne. His grin soon turned into a smirk, consider it payback for embarrassing me in front of Selina. Percy sighed, payback say. Got that right, Jackson. Change of subject, Annabeth said quickly. She pointed at Percy, then Naruto. You guys need to talk with the Oracle. Who's an Oracle? Percy frowned. Not who? What? The Oracle? I'll ask Cairo. Naruto raised a brow. The Oracle? You mean the Oracle? The Oracle of Delphi, slayer of the mighty Python and prophecy teller of Phoebus Apollo? Both Percy and Annabeth blinked amazed at how he knew all of that. But Annabeth managed to give him a small nod, er, yeah. How do you know that? She questioned suspiciously, but curiously. He realized his mistake and strained a smile. Uh, ninja powers. Annabeth studied him but then sighed waving him off, guess that makes sense. But in the corner of his eye, he saw that Percy gave him a weird look. Like he would keep an eye on him or something. Looks like the waterhead doesn't seem to trust Naruto as much as the others do. He flashed Percy a murderous glare that sent a chill down the dark-haired teen's spine. Yep. He was now growing even more suspicious of the blonde. Naruto sniffed the air and smelled. Dot seawater? It wasn't Annabeth because she smelled like olive oil and it wasn't him because he smelled like, uh, ramen. So it was coming from one person. Percy. Naruto scrunched his nose at the smell. It wasn't very delightful. He remembered Kronos telling him that children of Poseidon smell like the sea itself. His eyes widened as he took one last glance at Percy. No ing. Way. The waterhead is actually a waterhead. He's the son of Poseidon. The scent, the eyes, the skin tone, the hair. Son of Poseidon. Percy Jackson. He's the son of. Wait, he's the son of Poseidon? Naruto's face turned dark and he swallowed the lump forming in his throat. Then that means the great prophecy is coming true after all. Percy may be the one the prophecy speaks about. The one his father must defeat and kill in order to destroy Olympus and rule the world once more. 
Looks like Naruto has to befriend this weakling of a demigod in order to carry out the plan. He doesn't like it, but he has to do it. Or he'll suffer his father's wrath. He sighed pinching the bridge of his nose. Just what he needed, a child born from one of his brothers to get in his way. A wolf-like whistle was heard from the lake. Hey, they're handsome. Naruto's eyes shot open and whipped his head over to the lake only to see a couple of naiads whistling and waving at him. That snapped him out of his thoughts completely. He waved back with a small smile. Don't encourage them, Annabeth frowned at the teenage girls in the lake, naiads are terrible flirts. After hearing that the naiads were flirting with him, he raised a brow. They were flirting with me? He asked surprised and taken aback by this. Annabeth nodded as if this were obvious, he blinked. Why? She bit her bottom lip trying very hard not to blush, she gestured at his body. Well, because you, look, like this. The older blonde still looked lost so Percy spoke up, you look handsome, like, quarterback of your school's football team kind of handsome. Quarterback? Naruto frowned slightly in thought, he shook that off his mind, so they want to be with me. That's what you're saying? Percy and Annabeth nodded. He looked back at the lake staring at the naiads in disgust he looked back at the two shaking his head, I really don't see what's so attractive about them. Percy blinked thinking. Hold on, if all the kids here are half god. Demigod, Naruto and Annabeth said in unison. They raised a brow at each other for a moment then looked away. That's the official term, she said, or half bloods. Who's your dad then? Percy asked. Naruto and Percy saw her hands tighten. He just hit a sensitive spot that shouldn't have been asked. Seeing Annabeth look uncomfortable, well, more like angry caused Naruto to whack Percy up his head. The dark haired teen yelped, rubbing his and glaring at the blonde who glared back. After a minute or two, she finally spoke once more. My dad's a professor at West Point, she mumbled, I haven't seen him since I was very little. He teaches American history. Seems as if you don't like him very much, Naruto said. Annabeth looked down in somewhat sadness. Because maybe it was true. He could tell just by looking at her she had a rough past, something they both shared. He's human. That made Annabeth hold herself back from punching the waterhead straight in the face. What? She growled, you assume he has to be a male god who finds female mortals attractive? Naruto slapped his forehead looking at a almost frightened Percy. How east is that, you jerk? It was time for Naruto to intervene before a fight broke out which he wouldn't mind, something Kronos was talking about popped up into his mind, what's happening on the summer solstice? He questioned the daughter of Athena who froze then stared at him. You know something? He fiddled with his fingers trying to come up with a good lie, he couldn't tell them that he overheard his father talking about it, they'd get suspicious. I heard some. Uh, satyrs talking about it. But, other than that. No I don't know anything. Percy snapped his fingers. I heard Grover and Chiron talking about it at my old school. Her shoulders tensed and she fiddled with her camp necklace. I wish I knew. The satyrs, Chiron, they know, but they won't say a word about to me. I can tell that something is going on in Olympus. Something not good. Last time I was there it seemed normal. Naruto smirked at the fact she'd been to Olympus. Percy blinked. You've been to Olympus before? Some of us year rounders, Luke. Clarice and I and a few others we took a trip to Olympus during the winter solstice, she explained, that's when the gods have their big annual meeting. How do you get to Olympus? The whiskered teen asked curiously, he just had to know, he would reveal the location to his father. Long Island Road, of course, she said looking at him like he should already know this, you get off at Penn Station. Empire State Building, special elevator to the 600th floor. You two are New Yorkers, right? Oh, sure, Percy said. Naruto shrugged lightly, he didn't know about those things. Right after we visited, the weather got weird as if the gods had started fighting. A couple of times since I heard satyrs talking about it. The best I can figure out is that something very important was stolen. And if it isn't returned by the summer solstice. Something terrible will happen. When you two came. I was hoping, well, Athena can get along with just anybody, except for Ares. Not to forget her rivalry with Poseidon. But, I mean, aside from that, I thought we could all work together. I thought you two may know something. The dark haired son of Poseidon shook his head with a hungry expression while Naruto tried to think of what was stolen. 
he was real hesitant about saying anything, but eventually he shook his head. Annabeth clutched her necklace glancing down at the ground. I've got to get a quest, she mumbled to herself, I am not too young. Only if they would just tell me the problem. Percy sniffed the air and smelled what seemed to be like, barbecue. He sniffed once more, it was, it was nearby. Naruto licked his lips wanting to clutch his stomach. He was hungry of course. Annabeth saw the two boys and told them to go on, she would see them later. Percy looked nervous to be alone with Naruto. The guy was taller than him, and scary. He slowly looked up at the older teen who grinned down at him evilly walking away to where he would wait for dinner. He waved for Percy to follow him. The poor waterhead was hesitant. If he didn't obey the blonde then, something bad would have happened. He swallowed his dry throat catching up with the son of Kronos. Percy was now leading. He led an aggravated Naruto over to cabin 11, aka, the Hermes cabin, which was filled with a bunch of kids who looked either sad or was horsing around or talking. They were all waiting for dinner. Naruto's bright blue gold like eye twitched at seeing the kids and the loud sounds. I'm in hell. Come on. Percy dragged eye twitching Naruto over to the spot where they would sleep. He plopped down on the floor next to his minotaur horn while Naruto pushed his back against the wall crossing his arms over his chest with a huff. He stared at his minotaur horn. He wondered what his father was doing right now. His blue eyes scanned the room. Some of the kids who were fooling around had upturned eyebrows, sharp noses and mischievous smiles. A sigh escaped his lips and his hand ran through his short cropped hair. This is just so ed up, he muttered to himself. But Percy must have heard because he responded. I know, right? Percy agreed. No one here will give me a straight answer. Maybe you shouldn't go around asking everyone for answers. Maybe you have to find the answers, or maybe you haven't found the right person to ask. Okay then. Are you the right person? Probably. Probably not. Hard to say. Percy's eyes looked around the floor thinking. After a few minutes of silence, he asked the whiskered face blonde a serious question he always wanted answered. Well, do you know who my father is? Naruto was quiet for a second but he cleared his throat still not meeting eye contact with Percy. Your father is a selfish bastard who overthrew his own father. A frown spread across Percy's confused face. He was about to snap at the blonde for calling his dad a bastard until a guy around 19 walked up to them. He had sandy blonde hair blue eyes that looked lighter than Naruto's, an athletic and muscular build and the Hermes family resemblance. Except for that scar marred his right cheek, but his smile was intact. He looked at Naruto and extended his hand. Hi, I'm Luke. Naruto stared at the hand for a while then shook it with a forced smile. I'm Naruto. Naruto Uzumaki. Nice to meet you, Naruto, Luke said taking back his hand, you and Percy friends? The two boys glanced at each other for a moment. Percy knew the answer and shrugged. Something like that. Luke nodded understanding then remembered what he was going to say, oh yeah. Percy, I found you a sleeping bag. And I stole some toiletries from the camp store. If I knew you were going to be here, Naruto, I would have gotten you some stuff as well. Naruto waved that off, eh, doesn't even matter. Thanks for the stuff, Percy said. No prob. Luke joined Naruto on the wall folding his arms over his chest, hard first day? He asked looking at both of them. Not really, Naruto muttered. A small smile flashed across his lips that wasn't strained or forced, I met a girl, though. Her name's Selina Bergard. She's a daughter of Aphrodite. She's real. Interesting. Luke grinned. You got a crush on the only daughter of Aphrodite who doesn't believe in breaking others' hearts. A shade of red bounced on Naruto's face causing Percy and Luke to laugh. Nn no I just think she's very, interesting and pretty. Percy looked up at Luke and with a smirk, he likes her. Yeah. Totally, Luke nodded still grinning. Naruto gritted his teeth trying hard not to blush. So, wait a minute, Percy said getting Naruto and Luke's attention, your dad is Hermes? Luke's grin suddenly dropped to a dark look that made Naruto smirk. He took out his switchblade, Naruto grinned excitedly thinking he was going to gut the son of Poseidon who thought the same thing. But all he did was scrape the mud off the sole of his sandal. Naruto's grin dropped and he sighed disappointed, yeah, Hermes. The wing-footed messenger god. Yep. God of messengers, roads, travelers, speed, commerce, thieves, medicine, merchants, 
athletes and mail deliveries. But that's why you're here, to enjoy Cabin Eleven's hospitality. Hermes isn't picky about who he sponsors. Ever meet your dad? Once. Naruto studied Luke's face. His eyes landed on the scar on Luke's right cheek. It must have come from meeting Hermes. Naruto thought that Hermes was probably smarter and less of an idiot, unlike Apollo. Seeing that scar made Naruto wonder, if he failed or betrayed Kronos, would his father hurt him physically? Would he curse him? Or give him a scar almost worse than Luke's? The questions piled up in Naruto's head making him shiver with a low groan. He decided to just forget. That would help him. Luke looked down at Percy and managed a smile. Percy, don't worry about it, okay? The camper's here. Some of them are good people who had a rough past. After all, he now looked at Naruto. We're all extended family, aren't we? We take care of each other. The look on Luke's face made Naruto's nose scrunch, like he knew something about him. A tried to hide a small frown before looking down, whispering, Right. Clarice, from the Ares cabin, was joking about me being big three material. Then Annabeth. Twice. She said I might be the one. She said Naruto and I should speak to the Oracle. What was that all about? Percy questioned Luke who folded his knife. I hate prophecies. Naruto faced Luke questionably, why? He asked the sandy blonde curiously. His face around the scar twitched. Percy and Naruto both knew that something bad probably happened. I messed things up for everybody else. Two years ago, ever since my little trip to Garden of the Hesperides went sour as hell, Chiron hasn't allowed any more quests. Annabeth's dying to go on one. She's pestered Chiron so many times that he finally broke and told her he already knew her fate. He had a prophecy from that stupid oracle. He didn't tell her the whole thing, but, he said Annabeth wasn't destined to go on a quest just yet. She had to wait until two people special arrived at camp, he glanced at Percy and Naruto. Two special people. The whiskered blonde thought, he knew it was Percy, but him? He wasn't anything special. He was just a son of the Titan Lord. Nothing more. But what if the prophecy did speak about him? What if he was the second special person? What would happen then? Somebody special? The son of Poseidon thought aloud. Luke saw the look on both their faces and sighed, Don't worry about it, kids. Naruto shot the sandy blonde a death glare. I am not a child. He pointed at Percy using his thumb. He might be. Dot but I'm not. Remember that. Dot kid. He hissed knitting his brows at Luke who did the same. The two glared at each other having a silent conversation. Percy jumped in before a fight started. Uh, is it time for dinner yet, Luke? Luke heard a horn blow in a distance. He looked away from Naruto who still glared daggers at him. Yeah, it is. When the son of Hermes walked outside of the cabin, Percy turned to Naruto who had on his signature dark look, You okay? He asked concerned. Even though they weren't technically friends he could still care, right? He growled. That idiot knows something he shouldn't, something about me. 11. Fall in. When Luke's voice rang through the inside of cabin 11, everyone spilled out of the cabin into the common yards. Everyone was rushing there except for Naruto who wandered with his hands stuffed inside his pockets and his eyes closed following the group of kids. Since Luke was obviously the counselor he made the kids line up in order of seniority. A glare came across Luke's face as his eyes landed on Naruto who was the last in the line who wasn't in the line, he was next to Percy who was. Is there a problem, Uzumaki? The sandy blonde asked straining a friendly smile. This caused Naruto to scoff and grin clicking his tongue. No, there isn't. Why do you ask? Him playing dumb made Luke grunt clenching his fists, yeah, he said walking up to the blonde who was a few inches taller than him. But their faces were so close to each other that their noses almost touched, get in the line like everyone else. A sudden urge to act like a smart-mouthed idiot came across Naruto who grinned even more and jabbed Luke in the chest. Sorry, but, uh, last time I checked. Dot you aren't my daddy. Remember that. Dot kid, he winked at the last part. Luke kept glaring at Naruto who just grinned like a madman. He finally sighed letting his anger go before walking up to the front waving for the campers to follow him which they did. Percy looked back at Naruto questionably, what was that all about? He asked, why don't you like Luke? He seems like a nice guy. He's a nice guy, just in you and everyone else's eyes. 
I know the truth about him. He's not some regular old camper here, that's for sure, Naruto said as they marched up the hill to the mess hall pavilion. Satyrs joined them from the meadow, Nayads came out from the canoeing lakes and a few other girls came out of wood. Like, the wood from trees. He smiled at seeing one of the girls who were nine or ten skipping along with the other girls just like her. What do you mean? Don't you know anything, Waterhead? Percy frowned at the blonde. He didn't like the way how the blonde said negative things to him and everyone else. Maybe his negativity came from not having a mother. For now, he would just stay quiet around the older teen. In the pavilion each cabin had their own tables. Torches blazed all around the columns, central fire crackled it was the size of a bathtub. All the tables were in white and were trimmed in purple. Four tables were empty but cabin 11's was overcrowded. Percy and Naruto squeezed into their seats grunting. Then, after a few minutes, Chiron stomped his hoof on the floor causing everyone to go silent and look at him. He raised a glass. To the gods. Everyone else raised their glasses shouted, to the gods. Naruto frowned slightly at that mumbling, yeah, to the gods. Wood nymphs came around with platters of, grapes, apples, cheese, strawberries, barbecue and also. Naruto's eyes widened. Ramen. His eyes never left the bowl in front of him that was full of deliciousness. He sniffed it and his blue eyes fluttered. He was in love. He was interrupted by his delicious by Percy who tapped his shoulder. He pointed at the blonde's empty glass, you want me to fill it or do you want it to do it? How do you fill it? Naruto asked and watched as Percy spoke to it. Cherry Coke came bubbling into it. He gasped picking the glass up. Not because of the speaking into it thing, but because he never saw a beverage like this before. He brought it to his mouth gulping it down loving the sweet taste. Here, you go, Percy, Luke said handing him a basket filled with briskets. Percy piled his plate as did Naruto as the two began fighting over the basket. But they stopped. Everyone was rising from their seats walking over to the fire. Luke patted both boys' shoulders, come on. When the two boys got closer, they saw that everyone was grabbing a portion of their food and dropping it into the fire. Naruto cried out in horror at seeing someone drop a bowl full of ramen into the fire. This was crazy. This was absolutely crazy. Why in the world would anyone throw ramen in that fire? He never had ramen before, but he cared for it dearly, like it was his own child. Luke looked at the Naruto and Percy, but glared somewhat at Naruto, burnt offerings to the gods. They love the smell. You're kidding, Percy said. Luke shot him a warning look. Naruto crossed his arms with a scoff. Burnt offerings, he repeated, why in the world would an almighty god or goddess want to burnt smells filling up their nostrils? I know, right? Percy agreed. He watched Luke bow his head and tossed in fat red grapes. Hermes, he muttered as the fire sizzled, burning the grapes. Percy was next. He approached the fire. He dumped his brisket into the fire. He didn't gag. It was actually a nice smell. Like hot chocolate or chocolate chip cookies. Please, he pleaded, whoever you are. Tell me, please. Naruto now approached the fire. He scanned it. Sweat dropped from his temples because of the heat. He sighed throwing in a strawberry. He took a whiff of the smoke. He knew what God's name to say. To Zeus, he muttered darkly. Everyone returned to their seats and began to finish their meals. They laughed and chatted off about different things. But everyone became silent when Chiron stomped his hoof on the floor to get everyone's attention. Mr. D stood up sighing annoyed. Yes, yes, whatever. Guess I'd better say, hello, to all you brats. Hello. Our activities director, Chiron, says the next capture the flag will be on Friday. Cabin 5 presently holds the laurels. Shears came from the Ares table. As if they just won a battle or a war, I really couldn't care less. But, uh, congrats. I should also tell you that we have two new campers. Peter Johnson and Natsu Utara. Chiron muttered something in the god's ear. Sorry, everyone. Percy Jackson and Naruto Uzumaki. There you have it. Run along to your little campfire. Go on. They all scurried to the campfire. They told stories and the Apollo cabin kids played their guitars having a sing along. When the sing along ended everyone clapped with grins, except for Naruto who rolled his eyes. His eyes widened and a tint of pink formed on his whiskered cheeks when Selena moved away from the Aphrodite kids to scoot next to him. He smiled at her and she did the same. 
Naruto and Selina laughed joking about different things. He liked that she was different from all the other Aphrodite children. Minutes later, the horn blew through the camp again. Everyone trailed back to their cabins because it was bedtime. Naruto flopped down on the floor landing on his back. His gold-like bright blue eyes stared up at the ceiling with millions of thoughts running wildly through his mind. Like, is what he's doing is right or not? 99.9% .9 of him was sure he was doing the right thing by obeying his father's wishes. Dot, but that 1% was very questionable and unsure. Thinking things like that gave him headaches. He groaned quietly clutching his head, beads of sweat formed on his forehead that soon dropped down splashing on the floor. His abdomen then began to burn as if someone were placing fire on it. He flopped and moved around the floor, his body rolled into the corner, he hugged his sides groaning even more panting trying to catch his breath. But the pain seared through his entire body now. He panted heavily and lifted his shirt with shaky hands. His eyes widened at seeing what was causing him such pain. It looked to be some sort of tattoo that was glowing red, it was a symbol of a sun that had swirls in the center of it. Naruto began to panic as lightning encased his entire body. He screamed out in pain but no one heard him, that's when he disappeared. In thin air, Naruto floated in and out of consciousness. He saw different people observing him. He could never make out their faces because his vision was blurry and he went back to being unconscious. In his dreams, dot all he saw was darkness. He gasped when the darkness transformed into something else. It looked to be a godly kingdom. Was it Olympus? But it was on fire and dead bloody bodies were laid everywhere. He realized those were the bodies of demigods and satyrs. He heard a crashing noise and piercing screams of pain. He looked up then to the side to see his father like he was eons ago. Tall and vicious. He swallowed his dry throat seeing Kronos kill so many people. Now this made him realize that maybe the gods and everyone else were the good guys and his father was the bad guy. Do not let them poison your mind against me. Kronos hissed looking down at the blonde who looked up at him. You are my last hope of destroying this wretched world. We will rule together for eternity. The gods. Zeus, Hades and Poseidon. They'll all be gone. You will not be pained anymore by them, neither will I you are a Demititan. That means you are half mortal, half titan. You are not a demigod. You are not half mortal, half god. You must represent the titans. Dot and most of all, me. Letting that seep into Naruto's brain, the blonde's eyes turned gold and he felt powerful. Evil was flowing through his blood. It felt good. When he was turning good, almost completely good, he felt weak. But now he's bad, evil, like he once was, and now, he's stronger than ever. Naruto's blue eyes snapped open quickly, he sat up panting as sweat dripped down off his face. So, you have finally awakened, Naruto Uzumaki. A powerful voice boomed. Naruto's eyes locked onto the twenty-foot-tall males and females staring down at him. They were in thrones as big as them. Naruto frowned slightly at the male who sat in the biggest throne with a glare that was directed at him. W who are you? The blonde-haired boy questioned, why am I here? He demanded loudly, his voice was filled with anger and worry. He had a feeling he knew who these people were. They were immortal and had a godly aura. He gasped finally realizing who they were, you're the twelve Olympians, and you. His eyes locked on a middle-aged man who had long shoulder-length black hair, neatly trimmed black and gray beard, brilliant electric blue eyes. He had a very handsome face and he was very muscular. Naruto's blue eyes shimmered to gold back to blue and they widened. Your your Zeus, my brother. A god with long golden hair that dropped to his shoulders, sky blue eyes, muscular built, a very handsome face and tan skin, grinned at Zeus. Dad? He spoke up, this guy doesn't look so bad. Zeus glared harshly at his son, silence, Apollo. The god, revealed as Apollo, gulped biting his bottom lip looking away. Naruto was in front of the gods. The twelve Olympians except for Dionysus who could probably destroy him in a blink of an eye. He panicked, but didn't show it. Did they know he was Kronos' child? Of course they did. It was only a matter of time before they figured it out. So he sighed, fine. You all caught me. I'm the Demititan son of Kronos. The first ever Demititan, in history. Right now, I'm guessing my esteemed king of the gods, Big Brother, will have a hissy fit and destroy me. A goddess with long wavy shoulder-length red hair, 
violet eyes, a gorgeous face, pink lip gloss, fair skin and... Dot you know what? She was just perfect. She was extremely beautiful no gorgeous. Better than gorgeous. She giggled at the blonde boy and winked at him. He felt his face heat up but he shook his head and frowned at the goddess. You dare insult me? Zeus growled, you ought to be glad I cannot turn you into ash. Mother forbid from doing so. Naruto was taken aback by that. W what? Are you saying that Rhea told you not to kill me? Zeus looked annoyed. No, she told me to let you prance around in a field of unicorns and sunshine of course she told me not to kill you. A small smile formed on Naruto's lips. Something tingled inside his stomach. He was happy to know that Rhea might care about him. This got him into a mood of messing with his older brother. Ah, ah. He waggled his index finger with a light smirk. Someone sounds very angry. Were you not put down for your nappy wappy? The other Olympians burst out in laughter. Zeus blushed slightly frowning at gods and goddesses. He sent a glare to Hera who laughed softly but she saw he glare and whistled innocently. He did not like to be embarrassed. Especially in front of all the other gods and goddesses. Are you upset about your master bolt brother naruto grinned hey i'll buy you a plush one from somewhere if you want it'll replace the other one i mean your master bolt is a toy right it just makes sounds that goes boom 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 i enough of this zeus boomed causing the other olympians to hush up quickly his teeth were grinding together if i did not love mother so much you would have been in tiny smoking pieces okay i'll stop embarrassing you brother but tell me, dot why am I here? Simple. We found out you were Kronos' son, answered Artemis. She eyed him with a look of disgust. Naruto understood why though. She was a man-hater. But how did they find out he was Kronos' son? It was quite easy, she said as if she read his mind. His eyes widened, you have a powerful aura. Too powerful for a demigods. Dot and a gods maybe. So we are going to keep an eye on you. Poseidon said shooting his little brother a smile, just to make sure you will not try anything. Mainly because it is said that Kronos will rise once more, and since you are his son, well. Naruto gritted his teeth and furrowed his blonde brows. What? You all think just because I'm his son that I'll turn evil or something? Well, I'm not, he spun around on his heels and took a deep breath, I'll be taking my leave, and don't ever summon me here again. Swords clashed and clanged together. Sparks flew. Heads spun, people fell on their faces. The blonde son of Kronos was beginning to learn how to fight using a sword. Percy was training with Luke, and since Luke and Naruto didn't exactly get along well, he decided to learn from someone else. And that person happened to be Clarice who offered to teach him. He decided that they should spend some time together since they've had little interaction. But after the past few days they've become fast friends. But something was bugging Nartuo. Something that happened at least a week ago with the twelve Olympians. They summoned him and practically tried to interrogate him, except they said things like, we will watch you, or, we just have to keep an eye on you, and all those things made his head hurt. So he shook it off his mind and focused on what was important. The sword Clarice was holding. His sword he was holding, and how beautiful Clarice looked. His blue eyes widened at that last part. What, he liked Selena, right? Of course he did. But Clarice? She was his friend. And his friend only. Would it be weird to like two people in romantic ways? Nah. Gods do it all the time. A small smile spread across his lips as he collided his sword with Clarice's for one final time. The daughter of Ares backed away slowly with a smirk lowering her sword. Sweat dripped down from her face. Well. Looks like you've finally gotten the hang of it, she panted. Naruto's entire body was drenched in sweat. Pants escaped his lips and he blinked his eyes trying to keep the sweat from getting in them. A grin plastered on his lips, of course I did, war girl. I am a shinobi, after all, he said with a wink. He tried to grip his sword tighter but it started to feel heavy in his hands. Yeah, she scoffed, a shinobi that doesn't know how to work a sword. Don't ninjas fight with those katana thingies? At least they're close to swords. Hell, they are. Katanas weren't my favorite weapon. I'm used to shurikens and kunais. Not to mention my incredible jutsus, he said wiping some sweat from his face using his hand. Clarice was about to shoot him a smart-ass joke until he took off his plate then slipped off his black short-sleeved shirt. 
All the girls that were training paused to stare at his form. His chest was definitely toned. His abs were rock hard and you could probably grind diamonds against them. His biceps were big and muscular. The sweat that ran down his body caused his skin to sparkle due to the light of the sun he threw his plate and shirt on the ground, damn. All the girls including Clarice snapped out of their staring, why is it so hot out here? A wolf whistle came from one of the Aphrodite cabin girls who were sitting around watching. She waved at Naruto. Hey there, hot stuff. Why don't you come and spend the night at my cabin? She giggled but yelped when a flushed Selena swatted her arm with a disapproving glare. Naruto waved at Selena who waved back lightly with a warm smile. He turned his attention to Clarice who came charging at him in full power, she swung her sword at his head but he jumped back. She jabbed at him several times, which he dodged, he then swung his sword up in an upward angle and brought it down onto Clarice's. She broke the collision by kicking at his feet causing him to fall face first into the grass. He looked up and she was about to drive her sword down into him. He rolled out of the way only to see her sword smash into the ground she grunted several times before yanking it out and staring at him like a madwoman. Naruto gulped jumping to his feet. He swung his sword at her sides but she rolled out of the way and brought her sword up. The blonde instantly knew what was about to happen so sliced at her midsection causing her to stumble backwards. He smirked and waved for her to give it her very best. She growled throwing her sword to the side earning a frown of confusion from the blonde. Clarice unbuckled something from behind her back, she whipped out her beloved spear when she gripped it tighter. Electricity crackled around the sharp edges. Oh, Naruto muttered under his breath. They were done with swords. Apparently, he drove the war, fighting crazed daughter of Ares over the edge, he was most definitely ed up. Everyone stopped training to watch the fight, they began to yell, cheer and pump their fists in the air. Clarice charged at Naruto with hardened eyes, she sent a thrust at his midsection but he sidestepped away. That's when Clarice started to aim at his head which he was failing to dodge, he started to stumble over his feet but he jumped back and landed far away from the war crazed girl. She bolted at him once more swinging her spear at his neck and chest, Naruto was about to knock the spear to the dirt until she clocked him in the eye using the other end of her spear. He cried out covering his now bruised right eye with his hands. His left eye widened when Clarice clocked him in the jaw sending him on the ground, his back was pressed against the ground. He spat the blood out of the corner of his mouth staring up at Clarice who smirked at him. So, ninja boy, are you going to get your ass up or what? Naruto took a few deep breaths before scrambling to his feet. He gripped his sword which he forgot he had, he jabbed it at Clarice's side, mainly surprising her. She was quick to block it but he swiped his legs at her feet causing her to yelp and fall down landing roughly on her back. Her spear was laying a few feet away from her, she was about to stand up until her eyes were staring at the sharp end of Naruto's sword. He smirked. I win, he declared lifting his sword and twirling it in his hand before stabbing it in the ground. The blonde held out his hand, Clarice had a tint of pink on her cheeks before taking his hand as he lifted her up to her feet, she then punched him in the shoulder with a small frown. That's for pointing that stupid sword in my face. Ow, ow, ouch. Naruto cried out with a wince of pain gripping his now injured shoulder. She could hit like a certain pink haired girl he tried so hardly to remember, why do you hit so damn hard? Clarice winked at him, perk for being a child of Ares, ninja boy. He then winced feeling a throbbing pain in both his right eye that was turning a bruised darkish purplish color and the left side of his face that seemed to be doing the same thing. Clarice winced at the damage she had done. Apparently she had been a bit too rough for the poor guy. Sorry, she apologized. The thought of rubbing his eye and the side of his face occurred to her but she blushed lightly shaking it off of her mind. She rubbed the back of her neck sheepishly, guess I took things a little too far. The blonde spat out some blood before nodding saying, no kidding, but you're strong, and that's kind of, uh, er, um, dot hot. Hearing that made Clarice stare at him for a while before she grabbed him by his face and crashed her lips to his. His blue eyes widened before accepting the kiss by closing his eyes and wrapping his arms around her waist, deepening the kiss. His tongue licked her bottom lip begging for an entrance into her mouth which she accepted and their tongues wrestled each other for dominance. His hands started to snake away from her back to her rear giving it a light squeeze. She gasped in surprise breaking away from the kiss. The two stared in each other's eyes and released their grip on one another. Blushes formed on both their cheeks. 
It was quiet for a moment, the only sound they heard were weapons clashing together. Finally, Naruto spoke up, so, uh, see you at capture the flag? Yeah, whatever, Clarice said, almost in a mumble. Naruto took a deep breath rubbing his still bruised eye. Okay. Good. Um, I better get this and my the side of my face wrapped up. See you tonight, war girl. He backed away but then spun around on his heels and sprinted away. Millions of thoughts were zooming around in his head at 100 miles per hour, and here I thought Selena would be my first kiss, he thought with a groan heading to the infirmary. Tonight, would definitely be complicated, the night after dinner. Excitement roared through camp more than usual. Percy and Naruto knew what time it was. It was time for capture the flag, at last. When the plates were gone the conch horn sounded all through camp and everyone stood at their tables. Campers cheered and yelled pumping their fists in the air when Annabeth and two of her siblings came running in with a silver banner. It was probably ten feet long, but it had the grey colour glistened in the moonlight and it had a picture of an owl above an olive tree. When Clarice ran in with her siblings, she carried the same exact banner, except it was gaudy red and it had bloody spears and a boar's head. A small blush found itself on the blonde's whiskered cheeks at seeing Clarice, who maybe saw him as well because she bit her lip and a tint of pink plastered across her cheeks. Him and Clarice were practice fighting and she gave him a black eye and a bruised cheek. After that, she kissed him and he kissed her back. Teenage hormones had caught both of them. Percy turned to Naruto, think those are the flags? He yelled over the noise. Naruto shrugged, maybe, he yelled as well but do you think Athena and Ares have always led the teams? Maybe not. What if they just do it often, then, they just do it often, but I wonder what happens if another cabin captures one. I wonder if they repaint it. Luke looked at them with a grin. Don't worry guys, you'll see. Okay. Dot but whose side are we on anyways? Percy asked. His shoulders tensed at seeing the sly look Luke gave him and Naruto furrowed his golden brows. We've made a temporary alliance with Athena, he explained, tonight we get the flag from Ares, and the two of you are going to help. Percy swallowed his now dry throat and exchanged looks with Naruto. The teams were announced, the Athena cabin made an alliance with the Hermes and Apollo cabin, the two biggest cabins. The privileges were, shore schedules, traded shower time, the best slots for activities in order to win support. The Ares cabin made an alliance with the remaining cabins. Demeter. Hephaestus, Aphrodite and Dionysus. The Aphrodite kids mostly sat out every activity doing their hair, gossiping and checking their reflection. Chiron stomped his hoof on the marble. Heroes, he shouted, you know the rules. The creek is the boundary line. The entire forest is fair game. All magic items are allowed. The banner must be prominently displayed, and have no more than two guards. Prisoners may be disarmed, but may not be bound or gagged. No killing or maiming is allowed. I will serve as referee and battlefield medic. Arm yourselves. He spread his hands and the tables were suddenly covered with equipment. Helmets, bronze swords, spears and oxide shields coated in metal. Percy was stunned at the weapons and asked a lot of questions that Naruto answered with sarcastic remarks. Luke told the two that they would be on border patrol, and that didn't sit well Naruto. He wanted to charge out into the battlefield and fight. But patrolling? No that's not a job for someone as powerful as him. Their shields were large and a bit heavy for poor Percy who kept straining himself trying to hold it up. Their helmets, just like all the other helmets on the Athena side, had a blue horsehair plume on top. Ares and their allies had red, which wasn't surprising. Naruto cracked his knuckles and placed on his plate. He raised a brow at hearing someone calling his name he turned around and saw Selina running up to him with a smile. A small smile spread across his lips, hey, Selina, he greeted her, shouldn't you be on the other side? Selina nodded, yeah, I just wanted to wish you good luck. Thanks. Good luck to you as well. Selina bit her bottom lip before standing on her tippy toes and planting a small kiss on the blonde's cheek surprising him greatly. His eyes widened with a tint of pink on his cheeks. She winked with a grin before running off to the Aries side. His mind kept replaying Selena kissing him on the cheek. His heart bounced with joy and happiness much like it did when he kissed Clarice. He was snapped out of his thoughts when Annabeth's voice yelled. Blue team, forward. They cheered and shook their swords as Annabeth led them to the south of the woods. 
The Ares team yelled taunts and laughed at them as they ran off to the north side. Naruto walked up to Annabeth's side and she let out a sigh of relief. Thank the gods, Naruto, she said, we need you. I know, I know, he rolled his blue eyes, border patrol with the waterhead. Got it, captain my captain. Annabeth ignored the last part and shot him a confused look. Border patrol? She repeated. Naruto nodded lightly. Luke gave me the job. I can see Percy, but you know you're a ninja and we need you to fight with us and maybe do a little sneaking. And possibly capture the banner. Are you willing to do that? Of course. You're talking to the first shinobi camper that's ever stepped foot in this camp. I think I can handle a job like that. Naruto smirked at Annabeth, whose lips quirked into a smile almost. But, tell me, how are you so sure that this'll work? He asked her curiously. She grinned up at him, because Athena always has a plan. Naruto studied her face. He knew he didn't have any special feelings for her, but there was a little poke at his heart. He looked forward and exhaled sharply through his nose. He made his favorite hand sign. Shadow clone jutsu. He yelled out and four clones of him appeared in a puff of smoke. Annabeth coughed fanning the smoke away. Her gray eyes got big and she gasped in amazement. Amazing, she said poking the clones in their shoulders, solid clones. The clones frowned at her in aggravation from the poking. She stopped but poked them one last time before stopping for good. Yeah. My favorite jutsu, Naruto said. He then gripped his sword, aside from the Rasengan, which is my trademark jutsu. Astounding. Naruto? Where are you from exactly? His expression darkened at that. He knew where he was. He was in Tartarus training, but he couldn't tell her that. Plus he couldn't remember anything that happened at least a year ago. His father summoned him to Tartarus, but when he came to Camp Half-Blood, some of his memories began to come back to him, slowly. Before he could even answer, Percy ran up to them panting slightly. He nodded at Annabeth. Hey, he greeted her, but she pretended she didn't hear him and kept marching. Percy looked at Naruto who shrugged. Percy then looked behind him to see clones of the blonde. His bright sea green eyes got big, whoa. Are those duplicates or yourself? He asked and a clone Naruto half smiled with a light wave. The son of Poseidon waved back then his attention went to the real Naruto. Yes. I'll explain it to you later, Waterhead. Percy pouted at the nickname and turned to Annabeth. So, uh, what's the plan, Captain? Got any magical items you can loan me? Just watch Clarissa's spear, she told him. An uneasy look crossed her face, you don't want that thing to touch you. Otherwise, don't worry. We'll take the banner from Ares. And you'll guard our banner from Ares' people, just fight them off if you can. Okay. But, I, Annabeth grabbed Naruto's hand and pushed ahead leaving Percy behind with a depressed expression that made Naruto laugh. It was dark in the woods. Trees were everywhere and fireflies came and left. Percy was stationed at a creek in front of the banner while everyone else scattered behind boulders, bushes and even trees. Naruto sent his clones to go out and bring back information about the other team. He was standing on a branch of a tree wishing he had the Byakugan. The conkhorn blarred through the woods and battle cries were heard. Metal clashing, groaning and falling down sounded all through the woods. Naruto's eyebrows rose and he looked around and saw Annabeth with a few of her siblings fighting off Demeter and Ares' kids. His eyes looked behind them. One of his clones had informed him of something. They were going to ambush Annabeth and her siblings. Not only that, but they were going after Percy as well. He cursed under his breath then jumped off the tree making a hand sign and three clones of him appeared. When their feet hit the ground, they went charging behind a bush and cries of pain were heard. Behind the bush were a couple of Ares cabin kids and the clones had them in painful headlocks. Take him down, boss. A Naruto clone asked, hopefully. The Ares kids cried out, no, and, please, have mercy. The caster tapped his chin in thought with a smirk. Go nuts, he said and the clones smiled evilly at the kids. Hey, they were getting bored. A little roughing up never hurt anybody, right? Right. He sprinted up in the air deciding he should help Percy. He kept running and jumping until he came clapping down beside Percy who gulped staring at. Oh no it was Clarice and four other Ares children grinning like maniacs. Clarice winked at the blonde who flushed looking away and his hands went behind his back fiddling with some kunais. Cream the punk, she shouted. Clarice and her siblings surrounded them. 
They weren't afraid to attack right then and there. And neither was Naruto who chewed his bottom lip trying to think up a few things, he knew Percy would try and strike first, which gave him enough time to think up a plan. Percy jabbed his sword at the first kid who tried to swing his spear at Percy's head who tried to sidestep but Clarice thrusted her spear, aiming for Percy's heart but her blade hit against his shield. But soon he let out a piercing scream of pain as waves of electricity from Clarice's spear to his shield into his body. When the crackling of electricity stopped, he fell back hitting the ground as the smell of burnt hair filled the air. Naruto growled and threw his shurikens at the sons of Ares who groaned as the shurikens stabbed them in their biceps. Blood seeped out of their arms and he knew he lost his dessert privileges which he didn't care about. He grabbed one of the Ares guys by the hair and clocked him right in the nose. Blood poured out of the poor guy's nostrils and the blonde used the butt of his sword to strike him in the chest and in the gut roughly. The Ares guy groaned Naruto sidestepped before swinging his leg to the guy's face colliding him with the dirt. Another tried to sneak attack from behind but got a fist hard in the chest. Naruto did this several more times until the guy coughed up blood. Naruto then held out his hand and in the palm of it was a light blue ball of spiraling energy called the Rasengan which he blasted into the guy's abdomen until his plate broke and he was sent flying into his other siblings. Naruto felt his eyes shimmer from blue to gold and back to blue. His gaze landed on Clarice who was shocked and stunned at what she saw. When she saw him staring at her she gripped her spear with a war-like glare. He slowly walked up to her and stopped, standing right in front of her with a smirk. He was a head taller than her. He leaned down to her face and their lips were only inches apart. His breath tickled across her lips that were pursed but were begging to be kissed again by his. His hands cupped both sides of her face softly and delicately. The daughter of Ares' breath hitched when Naruto slammed his lips against hers. He kissed her with passion, but with also lust, she kissed him back the same way. Her hands wrapped around his neck and his hands wrapped around her waist pulling her closer and deepening the kiss which turned into a hot makeout session. Naruto let his right hand snatch both his and Clarissa's helmets off throwing them to the ground. His tongue licked all around her bottom lip, pleading to get in which she accepted by opening her mouth letting his tongue roam all around her mouth. Their tongues met and danced. Hormones were now in place. Naruto pulled his plate off his body and did the same to his shirt revealing his well-defined toned body. Naruto backed Clarice against a tree so that he could rip her plate off. His hands went inside her shirt to rub her abdomen and she moaned into the kiss and gripped his hair wanting more. His hands went up farther and squeezed her bra covered s and Clarice moaned even louder. Her tongue pinned down his needing more. She shifted her legs a little feeling a warmth in her core. He began to massage her s that were locked inside her black bra, he broke the kiss to move down to her neck. He nipped at it and planted soft kisses on it. Then he sucked and bit down into her neck and she moaned. Clarissa's eyes were closed so she didn't know what was going on beyond her sight. But she did stop moaning after hearing the sound of cheers and clapping. Her eyes opened and she gasped at seeing a clone of Naruto running with the banner in his hand with a whole gang of Ares kids and people from the Ares side. She growled and pushed Naruto off of her. He frowned but then turned around and saw why she was pissed. He looked back at her with a lopsided grin before running over to Percy's limp body and picking him up bridal style charging to where the winning point was. Clone Naruto jumped over the creek and ran into the Athena side territory winning capture the flag. The Athena side cheered hugged and grinned. The Ares side grumbled and threw down their helmets in defeat. Clarice glared and pointed at Naruto, it was a damn trick, she shouted to her side, that lucky bastard. A small blush spread across her cheeks remembering moments ago when her and Naruto almost got into each other's pants, she was so close. Naruto released the clone and sat Percy, who groaned in pain, in the creek, since he was the only one who knew about Percy being a son of Poseidon. Children of Poseidon can heal in water and regain their strength quickly too. Not bad, heroes, said the voice of Annabeth who stood next to Naruto. She was sweating and panting. Scratches were all over her face and body. In her hand was a Yankee's cap and she exhaled before looking at Percy. So, you let others fight your battles? She asked, with a small frown. Percy looked up at her with narrowed bright sea green eyes. You set me up, he accused her and Naruto gasped dramatically. You put me here because you knew Clarice would come for me. While you sent Naruto's clones around, and so one of them could get the flag. You had the whole damn thing figured out to perfection. 
Annabeth stared at him for a while before shrugging. Athena always has a plan. A plan to get me bulldozed or worse, Percy muttered under his breath, besides, you aren't even Athena so stop trying to act like you are. Luckily, Annabeth didn't hear the other thing he said or there would have been a fight. I was about to jump in, but Naruto came here first and took them down, she glanced at him with a smirk he caught and he snickered, he had everything under control. Even shoving his tongue down Clarissa's throat. Percy's jaw dropped at hearing that and he looked at Naruto, who flushed, with disbelief in his green eyes. Naruto muttered a few things in ancient Greek under his breath before exhaled through his nostrils sharply. Annabeth didn't look too pleased with Naruto having a makeout session with the enemy he should have been shish kebabbing instead of fondling with. She would bark at him later about that, but now, she noticed something in the corner of her eye. It was a bloody cut mark across Percy's chest, she could see it because he didn't have on his plate anymore, and the cut looked pretty nasty, she was about to take him to the infirmary to get stitched up until she saw the cut mark begin to fade away suddenly. Her eyebrows rose at this. The blood cut mark turned into a white line that she could barely even see. Where do you get that mark from, Percy? Clarissa's electric spear or whatever, so much electricity, it started to cut my skin real bad. Annabeth shook her head and pointed at his chest, no, look, it used to be a cut. Percy looked down and saw the cut mark form into a scar then disappear. His green eyes widened and his eyes met both Annabeth and Naruto, I, I don't get it, he murmured. His hand touched his chest and his fingers ran across the mark that was once on his chest. Naruto saw Annabeth make a frown. Both him and Percy knew she was thinking, and thinking hard. Naruto placed a hand on her shoulder giving it a light squeeze before telling Percy, get out of the water. What? Why? Just get your ass out, or I'll get your ass out, which is it? Percy stood up and walked out of the creek. Once he did that, all the power and adrenaline he felt disappeared. He groaned and stumbled forward but Naruto caught him just in time before he met the ground. Annabeth shook her head with a worried look. Oh, shit, she cursed and her fellow blonde looked at her, I didn't want. I assumed it would be Zeus, but. But, it's not. He isn't Zeus' kid. He's Pose. Naruto trailed off at hearing a canine growl. He could hear it, it was getting closer and a hungry howl wiped through the woods. The cheering stopped instantly and turned towards the trees. He then knitted his golden brows, damn it, Poseidon, if this is your epic showdown claiming of your son. His thoughts were snapped away after hearing Chiron shout and yell in Greek. Stand ready, everyone, my bow, Annabeth drew her sword with a worried and almost scared expression she tried so very hard to hide. Percy leaned more and more on Naruto with a frightened look, his hand tightened around the blonde's shoulder. Naruto's eye and cheek throbbed feeling the energy this monster was sending off. Then jumped out of the trees was a large dog the size of a rhino. Its eyes were red and fiery and its teeth were sharp as blades. Maybe even sharper. Those piercing red eyes glared right at Percy. As well as, Naruto, whose breathing hitched. His blue eyes turned gold. Damn. That's a hellhound from the fields of punishment. What is it doing here? He thought, suspiciously. Everyone was frozen with fear. No one dared to move, except for Annabeth that is. Percy. Naruto. Dot run. Naruto helped Percy walk by throwing his arm around his shoulder and wrapping his arm around his waist. The walking soon turned into running. Annabeth tried to hold the hellhound back but it leapt over her and she dropped to her knees. Annabeth saw that Naruto wanted to fight the hellhound but she kept screaming for him to protect Percy. He grumbled. A tiny voice in the very back of his head was telling him to throw Percy to the hound. It was Kronos while another voice yelled for him to keep going and don't let go of Percy. That voice sounded demonic but in a friendly way. Naruto's intense gold eyes burned as they had specks of crimson red in them, but they red disappeared leaving the gold. He then stopped and dropped Percy who looked up at him with a confused expression. He faced the hellhound that was charging their way, in the palm of his hand was a Rasengan that also swirled with air around it. High-pitched sounds filled the air and everyone covered their ears but kept their eyes on Naruto who lifted his hand up with a frown. He ran towards the hellhound with a growl and jumped. He slammed his jutsu in the face of the hellhound that cried out in pain. Naruto kept pushing and pushing his jutsu at the hellhound with a roar. Wind style. Rosenshuriken. 
The hellhound then began to fly back into the trees with Naruto still pressing his rosin shuriken against its nuzzle. Then there was a bright light in the center of the woods and the sound of a thousand explosives going off at the same time was heard. Everyone was dead silent. Percy gawked at this and soon found his strength. He got to his feet and stumbled before running off into the woods with Chiron and Annabeth yelling for him to stop. D. Immortals. Annabeth said. She turned to Chiron and he sighed before nodding lightly. She took off after the waterhead, practically cursing at him in Greek to wait up. When they reached where Naruto was, they were stunned to see that the hellhound was nothing but a pile of golden dust and fangs. Naruto walked up to them with a cough and a lopsided grin. Annabeth looked around, blinking. How in Hades did you destroy that hellhound without celestial bronze? Hum? Oh, yeah. Well, my kunais and shurukens are made out of that stuff. Naruto showed her his kunai and she studied it before nodding. He pocketed it. Where'd that hellhound come from? Isn't it supposed to be in the fields of punishment? Before Annabeth could answer, Chiron and the other campers came up to them. Yes, but, someone inside of camp must have summoned it here. Clarice marched out of the crowd with I'm so ing pissed off right now look. She pointed at Percy using her thumb. Percy. He did it. Him. He summoned the hellhound. It's all his fault. She yelled. Annabeth was about to snap at Clarice for saying such a thing but Naruto gave her shoulder a light squeeze. She grumbled with a frown. Quiet, child, Chiron told her. Everyone watched the body of the hellhound soak into the shadows, disappearing. Annabeth remembered what happened before the dumbass hellhound showed up. Percy, get in the water, right there, she told him, pointing at a creek that flowed with rocks in it. No why? I'm not hurt, Percy said stubbornly. Oh, for crying out loud, Naruto drew his kanai and cut Percy across the face. Percy screamed out clutching his face, Naruto then cut him across his shoulder and bicep drawing even more bloody cuts. Annabeth looked at her fellow blonde with a frown. Naruto pocketed his kanai, there. Now you're hurt so go and take your scrawny ass over to that creek. Percy winced feeling the bloody cut mark across his face sting and burn. He stepped into the creek feeling powerful like he did once before. The campers gathered around them. The cut across his face sealed closed as well as the ones on his shoulder and bicep. Everyone except for Naruto and Annabeth gasped. LL look, I don't know why, Percy tried to apologize, I'm sorry. Save your breath, waterhead, Naruto pointed above his head, looks like your daddy finally claimed you. Percy looked up. Above his head was a fading green light, he could still make it out, it was a hologram of a gleaming and glowing bright green sign. A trident was spinning around his head. He was a child of one of the big three. Poseidon. Your father. Oh my gods, Annabeth muttered, this really isn't good. Then it is determined, Chiron announced. All around Percy everyone knelt down, the Ares kids didn't look too happy about it, except for Naruto who still stood staring at the sign with his arms folded over his chest. Am my father? Percy asked, both happily and bewildered. A look of disgust passed across the blonde's face. Poseidon, Chiron spoke, Earthshaker, Stormbringer, father of horses. Hail, Perseus Jackson, son of the sea god. Then a bright gold sign flashed above Naruto's head getting everyone to gasp. A frightened look came across Chiron's face. He swallowed his now dry throat trying to get the words out of his mouth. Words he thought he would never say. Naruto looked up at the sign above his head and his face fell instantly. It was a bright glowing golden scythe. Great timing, Dad, Naruto thought, sarcastically. He took a deep breath and decided to play along. Play dumb actually. A fake look of confusion spread across his face as he looked at everyone. W what's wrong? Who's my parent? He asked, quietly. His fist clenched tightly. Who's my parent? He asked a bit louder. Chiron gulped before saying, Kronos, he spoke, King of the Titans, the Crooked One the titan lord of time, evil and harvest. Hail, titan prince Naruto Uzumaki, Demitted and son of Kronos. No. Dot way. The next morning, Chiron moved Percy over to cabin 3 which is the Poseidon cabin. He was the only component in the cabin due to some oath that the big three made 70 years ago, but both Poseidon and Zeus broke the oath. Percy had to admit he was pretty lonely in his cabin all by himself. But the good thing is that he's the counselor of his cabin. 
since there were no cabins for Titans or Kronos, Zeus allowed, well, Rhea forced him, Naruto to stay in cabin 1 which was Zeus cabin. And that kind of made Naruto the counselor of Zeus cabin. He thought everyone would be terrified of him. But Annabeth accepted him as did Percy, but he could tell the waterhead was a little suspicious. And Selina didn't have a problem with it, neither did Clarice. Well, okay, she did slap him then kissed him and then accepted him. Everyone was a little uneasy. Who wouldn't be? The Titan Lord's son was in their presence. Every time he stepped out of Zeus' cabin, the campers stopped to bow down to him which annoyed him greatly. Sure he was the Titan Prince, but come on, do you have to do that? Some of the girls in camp have been trying to seduce and woo him but he didn't notice that they were. When he was eating breakfast with Annabeth, a lot of girls piled over to them with blushes and grins. They tried to flirt with him even though he didn't know they were. Annabeth noted that he was very dense. Like, way dense. An Aphrodite girl tried to seduce him and he just smiled at her not knowing what she meant. The girls thought that he was so cute when he was dense. What? He just didn't understand girls, okay. Naruto, decided to speak with his older half-brother who was in the big house. He went inside looking in all the rooms until he stopped at a door that had voices behind it. He pressed his ear to the door listening carefully. Trojan war looked like a water balloon fight, muffled the voice of Chiron. Bad, muffled the voice of Percy. Chiron must be talking to Percy about what happened yesterday. Naruto snorted about to step away until he heard Chiron say. And you, Percy Jackson, will be the one to face Lord Zeus' wrath. Naruto pressed his ear to the door again. He grinned. But his grin fell when it began to rain and everyone stopped playing outside to go inside their respective cabins. Okay. So I have to find that stupid Master Bolt and return it Zeus, Percy said. What a better peace offering than to have the son of Poseidon return the master bolt to Zeus, Chiron said. If Poseidon doesn't have it, then, where is it exactly? I believe I know, Chiron said. Naruto could practically hear Chiron's facial expression turn grim and dark, part of a prophecy I had years ago. Well, some of the lines make sense now. But before I can say more, dot you must officially take up the quest. You must seek the counsel of the oracle. Why can't you tell me where the freak it is? Mainly because if I did, then you'd be too afraid to accept the challenge. Naruto heard Percy exhale sharply through his nose. Good reason, he muttered. You agree then? Chiron asked. It was a quiet for a moment before Percy took a deep breath and spoke again. All right, Percy said. Naruto heard him clasp his hands together, probably better than being turned into a dolphin. Then it is time you consulted the oracle. Chiron told him in a powerful voice that reminded the blonde of Zeus, go upstairs, Percy Jackson, to the attic. When you come back down, assuming you are still sane, we will talk some more. And this time, it's Naruto. After hearing all of that, Naruto stayed in his cabin, just staring at the floor. He saw a little green leaf by his right foot, he pointed at it and swirled his finger around it. It quickly shriveled up into an old brown cracked leaf. It was dying. Yep. He used his father's domain. He can control time and stuff, but he just never used it, mostly because there wasn't a reason to. But he was most definitely a master at it. He sighed and flicked his wrist upward causing the dying leaf to restore to its new form. It was bright green. Seeing that made Naruto's lip quirk into a smile. You have a wonderful smile. Naruto swung his head to the side and saw that a little girl was standing beside him with a warm smile. She sent off this weird wave of calmness and happiness. Er, thanks. She soon sat next to him on the bed and looked at him. Tell me, Naruto, do you know who I am? She questioned him curiously. He eyed her for a few seconds before shaking his head. She giggled making the blonde raise both his brows. He studied her face and the weird energy she was giving off. Then at that very moment, he knew who this girl was. H. Hestia? He stuttered in disbelief shooting up from the bed to his feet. The little girl transformed into a woman who had a light tan, a sweet and beautiful appearance, smelled like a fireplace and roasting marshmallows, an honest smile, black hair that was hidden in a shawl and her eyes were flame-like. It was Hestia. It was his older sister. The firstborn. He felt a dark look coat his face. Why have you come? To spy on me? Just like the other Olympians? Thanks, he told her with dry sarcasm. Hestia stopped him by placing her hand on his shoulder softly, Naruto. 
Wait, she pleaded in a soft tone, I'm not here to start trouble, but to tell you something. I can know it's been hard the past few days or weeks. But know something, I am not like the others, I care for you. I see a lot of potential in you, Naruto. So choose the right path. Naruto inhaled before turning around to face her, Hestia. He whispered, I can't say that you're the worst sister ever. Look at you. You're smart, beautiful, caring and very sweet. But, do you know what I am? I'm Kronos' son. It's my destiny to avenge him. It's what I was born to do. No, Naruto, Hestia shook her head. She placed her hand on the side of his face, little brother, you mustn't let Kronos choose your path. You are your own person. I truly do believe you'll do great things in this world. Just don't let Kronos use you, he. That's when anger built up inside of Naruto. He is not using me, father loves me. He said I was his chosen one, his chosen child, I was the child he wanted. You and the others just betrayed him. You all did what he did to his father. At least Kronos had a good reason to kill Uranos. You all didn't have a right to kill him. You're just traitors. Is that what you honestly believe, Naruto? He swallowed us. Did you know that? He swallowed us because of some prophecy Uranos gave him. We weren't born titans, but we were born gods. That is why Kronos swallowed us. Because we were stronger and different. Zeus saved us. The first Titanomachy began. We fought and thank goodness we won. I know that you think Kronos is wrong, because he is. The gods may sound troublesome by the things you've heard. Dot the truth is, the Titans are even more troublesome than we are. Naruto's eyes locked on the floor. Hestia cupped his chin and brought his face up so that she could see his eyes. She smiled brightly, and a good hearted boy like you should not follow evil hearted monster. I will leave now, Naruto. Please, think about what I've told you, and if you need to talk. I'll be tending to a hearth, and just like that, she disappeared leaving behind the smell of s'mores. Naruto gripped his hair and tugged at it, he was full of frustration. Part of him knew that Hestia was right while the other half screamed, no. She isn't, it was all just confusing. He was afflicted to the Titans, not the Olympians. He was the Titan Prince, the Titans needed him. But then again, what if that was all wrong? What if stuff like that is a terrible thing? Naruto groaned backing into the wall. He didn't know right from wrong or wrong from right. If he had his memories back, he would probably know what to do. But right now, he had to push that aside, because he had to join that quest Percy is going on. Naruto was right where he was before and overheard Chiron and Percy talking once more. Dot the son of the sea god, Chiron was saying, your father's bitterest rival is Zeus, lord of the sky. Your mother knew better than to trust you in an airplane. You would be in Zeus's domain. You would never come down again alive. Naruto scoffed to himself, wouldn't that be a good thing? He thought, then continued listening. He jumped at the sound of lightning crackling outside as well as the thunder booming. Okay, Percy said, then, I'll just travel overland. That's right, Chiron said and Naruto thought he may have added a nod in saying that, T. Naruto opened the door into the room with a smirk surprising Chiron, Percy and Grover. He threw his arms around the back of his neck. Son of Poseidon, I beg of you, let me join your ridiculous quest or I'll pound my fist into your head. Percy blinked but smirked. Are you sure you're up for it? He asked the blonde. Naruto rolled his blue orbs and held out his fist which Percy bumped with his own. Percy nodded over at Grover, G-man's coming too. The air behind Chiron shimmered, and Annabeth appeared with her Yankees cap. I've been waiting a very long time for a quest, seaweed brain, she placed her cap in her back pocket and earned a snicker from Naruto and a pout from Percy because of the nickname. Athena is no fan of Poseidon, but if you're going to save the world along with those two idiots, Grover bleated with a frown and Naruto furrowed his brows at her, then I may as well come along to make sure neither of you three mess it up, especially you, seaweed brain. Percy grinned at her, if you do say so yourself, he said, do you at least have a plan, wise girl? The younger blonde's cheeks burned and she growled, do you want my help or not? She snapped. Duh, Percy said and she managed to smile, a quartet. That'll work, right Chiron? Chiron took a deep breath. I suppose, he said obviously uncomfortable at the number, but usually it's supposed to be three members. More than three is deadly and dangerous. Many things are bound to happen. I just hope that you are all ready. 
Naruto looked at his quest members with a half smile. Yeah, he shrugged, I think we're ready. No I know we're ready. Right, G-man? Wise girl? Seaweed brain? Excellent, then, Chiron said with a small smile, this afternoon, we can take you as far as the bus terminal in Manhattan. After that, sadly, you are all on your own. Naruto and Grover jumped at the sound of thunder booming loudly in the dark sky. Rain poured down from the sky and lightning began to flash more and more. All right. No time to waste. I believe you all should get packing, Chiron told them. Don't worry, big bro, we'll handle everything. We promise, Naruto winked at Chiron who managed to wink back. Yeah, they were definitely going to return Zeus's master bolt. Naruto was currently in his cabin packing for the big quest. It didn't take him long since he didn't have a lot of things. He had an extra change of clothes and toothpaste along with toothbrush. Some girls even found him and the rest a backpack to place their stuff in. The color of his backpack was bright orange which made his face light up with a huge grin since orange was his favorite color. He was obsessed with it just like he was obsessed with ramen. The girls even loaned him 200 mortal dollars and 30 drachmas which made him thank all of them. They giggled and squealed with excitement and ran off. He raised a brow and thought, girls are weird. He shouldered his backpack and remembered when Chiron gave him, Annabeth and Percy a canteen filled with nectar and a Ziploc bag full of ambrosia squares. It was only to be used in emergencies when they were badly hurt. Percy was bringing the same thing Naruto was bringing. While Annabeth was bringing her Yankees cap, which was a twelfth birthday present from her mother Athena, a book on architecture written in ancient Greek for when she got bored and a long bronze knife hidden in her sleeve. Percy thought she was a nerd, but a pretty and dangerous one. Grover brought a Rasta-style cap to hide his horns, fake feet to pass as a human, his backpack, that Naruto admired so much because it was orange just like his, was full of scraps of metal and apples to eat. In his pocket was a reed pipe that his daddy goat carved for him plus he only knew a few songs to it. The songs were terrible on reed pipes that Naruto threatened to crush it with his bare hands. When it was time to leave, the four waved goodbye to the campers that waved back. A large group of girls cried out for Naruto to return back to camp safely which he smiled to. They took one last look at their beloved camp before walking up to Half Blood Hill to the tall pine tree that used to be Talia Grace, the daughter of Zeus who died bravely and was turned into a tree by her father who took pity on her. Chiron waited for them in his wheelchair form along with a beach guy who had eyes all over his face, neck and hands. He had tan skin and surfer blonde hair. He was also wearing a chauffeur's uniform. Naruto found the guy a little cool to have eyes all over his body. No one could sneak attack him. This is Argus, Chiron told Naruto and Percy gesturing to the guy who nodded at them lightly, he will drive you into the city, and, air, keep an eye on things. Naruto blinked. Was that supposed to be a joke? Chiron blushed slightly and Naruto shook his head. Shouldn't Chiron be able to tell great jokes? Naruto was. Kronos could tell awesome jokes to a bunch of people and they would laugh up a storm. Guess Chiron didn't inherit that. But Naruto did groan when he forgot to say goodbye to Selina and Clarice. When returned back to camp, he was going to get an earful, that's for sure. If you return, that is, hissed a low, cold, deep voice. Naruto looked around after he heard the voice. When he didn't see anyone, a small frown appeared on his face but soon disappeared when Selina and Luke came running down the hill and up to them panting lightly. He saw that Luke was carrying a pair of running shoes and that Selina had a silver necklace with a crimson red heart on it. Hey, Naruto greeted her with a smile and a small blush. Hey, yourself, Selina smiled at him. I wanted to give you something for your quest and say goodbye. She handed him the necklace and he grinned taking it. He soon placed it around his neck eyeing the heart. His own heart flipped and jumped with joy and happiness. He locked eyes with her, thank you. Just come back to me, okay. Clarice would have come but. Dot she was having issues with the Hermes cabin. They were pranking her cabin. Naruto shook his head with an amused look, when are they going to learn that Clarice will kill their asses one day? Selena's smile turned small. She hesitated but pulled the blonde into a loving hug surprising him but he returned it by hugging her back tightly. He wanted to stay like this with her for a while but he broke the hug to eye her kissable lips. He brought his lips down to hers. At first, it was slow and steady. But they soon fastened the pace by pouring their feelings out to each other. 
Selena licked his lip and he opened his mouth letting their tongues fight. They kept tasting one another for a while before breaking the kiss. They grinned at each other. I'll come back. I promise you that. Naruto shot her a lopsided grin and a thumbs up, believe it. The daughter of Aphrodite giggled before pecking him on the cheek and running back to camp. Naruto stared at her leaving before he couldn't see her anymore. He sighed before turning to Luke who was checking the shoes before going up to them panting. Hey, Luke greeted them, glad I caught you guys on time. Annabeth blushed but tried her hardest to hide it. Naruto noticed that she did that a lot when he was around. I just wanted to tell you guys good luck, Luke said and Naruto rolled his cerulean eyes, and I thought. Um, maybe you could use these, he handed Percy the shoes and he studied them for a moment. They looked okay and a bit normal until Luke said, Maya, small pure white bird's wings popped out of the side of the shoes and it startled Percy so much he dropped them. The wings flapped making the shoes fly up from the ground, the wings flapped for some time before closing up and dropping to the ground. Awesome. Grover grinned staring down at the shoes. Naruto stuffed his hands in his pockets before shrugging. E.H. Guess they're okay, he mumbled with his lips puckered to the side. Grover looked at Naruto with a shocked expression, okay? They're amazing, flying shoes. So what? Hermes has flying shoes, Naruto pointed out. Grover opened his mouth but nothing came out and Naruto flicked his forehead causing him to bleed with a frown. Luke smiled. Yeah, those served me well when I was on my quest. It was a gift from dad. Of course, I don't use them much these days. His expression turned sad. Naruto scoffed at that earning him a glare from Annabeth who swatted his arm. Naruto studied the scar on Luke's face. He thought that maybe the scar came from the failed quest he told them about. The scar was a huge reminder of that quest that did not end well. Naruto knew that Luke deserved it. Listen, Percy. Um, Naruto, Luke began with an uncomfortable look. Naruto arched his brow. A lot of hopes are riding on you guys. So just. Kill some monster for me, all right? Him and Percy shook his hands while Naruto growled at him. Luke shot him a glare causing Naruto to hold himself back from killing the son of Hermes instantly. Luke rubbed Grover's head between his horns and gave Annabeth a hug. She looked as if she might pass out with a dreamy look on her face. Luke then went running back towards camp causing Naruto to have a thankful look on his face. Without even looking, he smirked and told Annabeth, you're hyperventilating, wise girl. No I'm not. Yes, you are. S shut up, she grumbled with her arms crossed over her chest. Percy turned to Chiron with a disappointed look holding up the flying shoes. I won't be able to use these, will I? Naruto stepped to his side, with a shake of his head, no you can. That is, if you want to blast it into a million of pieces, so, go ahead. Be my guest, Waterhead. The son of the sea god knitted his brows at the blonde, sorry. But I'm just saying, you'll be in my brother's domain if you use those shoes. The dark-haired teen sighed before having an idea. He handed Grover the shoes with a half smile. Here, Grover. Since I can't use them. How about you use them? Grover's eyes widened. Me? Really? Percy soon had laced the shoes and told Grover he was ready for takeoff. Percy saluted his best friend with his chest puffed out and Grover did the same. He grinned excitedly and shouted to the shoes, Maya. The wings opened up and flapped. Grover cried out as he began to fly around, not knowing how to control the shoes. He flew high up and swooped down. He bleated covering his eyes. Practice, Grover. Chiron called out to the flying satyr, you just need practice. Grover then started flying towards the van bleeding non-stop. Before Naruto and Percy could follow him, Chiron pulled them back with a sigh. I should have trained you better Percy. You Naruto? You are okay, but you need to also learn your Demititan abilities. You may be able to do them, but do you know how to control them? Some you can control, but others. Your I mean, our father is known as the most powerful titan of them all. He has exceptional powers that may be hard to control. Naruto had to admit. He was a bit rusty on some of the powers his father had. Controlling time? He was great at that, but others? Not so great. Theseus, Jason, Achilles, Hercules they all had their training, Chiron told the two boys. Th that's okay. I just wish, what am I thinking? Chiron cried, I can't let you get away without this. He pulled a pen from out of his coat pocket and handed it to Percy. 
It was black ink and a ballpoint. Gee. Percy mumbled. Sarcasm found its way to his voice, thanks. A pen. Wow. I love this. Percy, that's a gift from your father. I've kept it for years, not knowing who you were, who I was waiting for. But the prophecy is clear to me now. You are the one, Chiron said. Percy took the cap off the pen and it grew longer and heavier. It was a shimmering bronze sword, with a double-edged blade, a leather wrap grip and a flat hilt riveted with golden studs. A small smile found its way on Chiron's lips, the sword has a long and tragic history that we need not go into. Its name is Anaclusmos. Riptide, Percy translated studying his new sword. Naruto eyed at some himself, he was a little jealous he didn't get anything. Chiron saw the look on his little half-brother's face and chuckled lightly to himself, and for you, Naruto, his eye quickly looked at Chiron and his ears perked up instantly. Chiron grabbed something from under his wheelchair and handed it to the blonde whose eyes got big. It was a bright gold sword that sparkled in the light, its grip was bandaged, the hilt looked to sharp like a hellhound's tooth and engraved on the side of it was the Uzumaki clan symbol. Naruto gripped the sword and felt much calmer, its name is Exoja. Naruto arched his brow. You mean, the name in English is, Power? Chiron nodded and the blonde twirled his new sword in his hand, all right. It actually showed up here anonymously. Every time a camper tried to have it or use it, bad things would happen. At that moment, I knew it had to be given to the right person. And when you showed up, I thought, well, you are the only one who can have it. It looks like it was made for you, the centaur told him. Percy then looked uncomfortable. He said, I love this sword and all. Dot but what happens when it's in pen form and I somehow lose it? You can't. Can't what? Lose the pen. It is enchanted. It will always reappear in your pocket. Try it. Percy was hesitant but Naruto grabbed the pen from his hand and threw it far away. He got a punch to the shoulder from Percy who was mad as hell at him for throwing the pen away. But when Chiron told him to check his pocket, he pulled out his pen. Percy's sweat dropped when he realized that he just punched a dude who was more athletic, stronger, faster and even more handsome than he was. The gleam in Naruto's eyes told Percy that he would receive hell later. Uh, what happens when a mortal sees me pulling out my sword? The son of Poseidon asked, Chiron who tapped his fingers against his armrest. Mist is a powerful thing, Percy. Mist. Yes. Read the Iliad. It's full of reference to the stuff. Whenever divine or monstrous elements mix with the mortal world, they generate mist which is controlled by the goddess of magic, Hecate. The mist obscures the vision of humans. You will see things just as they are, being a half-blood, but humans will interpret things quite differently. Remarkable, really, the length to which humans will go to fit things into their own version of reality. Percy placed his pen inside his pants pocket with an uneasy look. He just couldn't believe he was leaving for his first quest that would probably result in him dying. Dot, but you shouldn't think negative now, should ya? Naruto clapped his hand over Percy's shoulder, getting the younger teen who looked up at him. A grin found itself upon Naruto's lips. Don't worry. We'll ace this quest and return with flying colors. I will not let my friends die. Believe it. He winked at Percy and extended his fist out. Percy stared at it for a moment before smiling and pressing his fist against Naruto's. Chiron smiled at this and told them, All right, it's time. Keep a clear head, and remember Percy. Dot you might be able to prevent the biggest war in human history. Okay. Naruto saluted Chiron with a nod, okay. Naruto and Percy made their way down the hill to the van. Grover opened the door to the back of the van and hopped in along with Percy and Annabeth. Naruto, however, was wide-eyed checking out the van. He's never seen anything like this before. He ran his hand over the window and gave it a light knock. He sniffed it. Annabeth and the others shot him weird looks. He was freaking the hell out. He didn't know what this contraption was. His eye twitched and he tugged at his hair freaking out. He cried out and stomped his feet. He couldn't stop. This was all confusing. That is, until a certain daughter of Athena brought her fist to the side of his noggin. Tears spurted out of his eyes and he clutched his head with a moan of pain. Why'd you do that? Saku I mean, Annabeth. Naruto saw images of a pink-haired girl cracking him in the skull every time he said something or did something stupid. And a furious and scary look was always on her face. He knew her name now. Sakura Haruno. 
Well, Annabeth Chase made a great replacement for her. Would you stop lollygagging and get in the damn van, already? Annabeth grabbed his ear and pulled it roughly. He squirmed and groaned. She then pushed him in the van. She got back into the van with an irritated look all over her face. She slammed the door shut when Argus hopped into the driver's seat, starting the ignition. Annabeth caught Grover and Percy staring at her like she was crazy. What is it? She growled. Percy jumped and Grover bleated, hiding his face with a whimper. A nervous smile found its way on Percy's lips. And nothing, absolutely nothing. When she looked away, grumbling to herself about idiotic boys, he made a mental note to himself note to self do not i repeat do not piss annabeth off he thought with a gulp naruto was next to grover aiding his head that had a huge lump on it this quest is definitely going to be interesting argus drove them out of the countryside and into western long island naruto found himself staring at every mall food restaurant and billboard he's never seen anything like this before his eyes were lit up his hands wrapped around the grip of his new sword exosia Percy asked him why he didn't want to use the English name and he replied, because I'm not English and that's boring. He did fall in love with Exosia, he just wanted to hold onto it for the rest of his life. Even when he dies one day, two important people were on his mind, Selina and Clarice. Gods, he couldn't wait to return back to camp so he can run up to them and kiss them both. He had to admit it was a little weird to like two girls at once, but also kind of fun too. So far so good. Ten miles and not a single monster in sight, Percy told Annabeth. Annabeth shot him an irritated look. Don't say stuff like that, seaweed brain. It'll give us bad luck. Please, remind me again, but why do you hate me so much? Naruto leaned over to Grover, here it comes, he whispered to the satyr who sighed. I don't hate you. Wow. Could have fooled me. Annabeth folded her Yankees cap. Look, we're just not supposed to get along. Okay. Our parents are rivals. Okay. Dot but why? She sighed pinching the bridge of her nose. How many reason do you want? One time, my mom caught Poseidon in her temple with his girlfriend which is hugely disrespectful. Huh, my brother likes to shack up in other gods temples? Naruto asked but then smirked, me and him would definitely get along after this whole, stealing Mr. Zap Happy's boom boom toy. Thunder boomed in the sky and Naruto glared at it through his window. Percy snickered at the older blonde before turning his attention on Annabeth again. Another reason? He asked, still wanting to know why Annabeth didn't like him. Annabeth sighed. Athena and Poseidon competed against each other to be the patron god for the city of Athens. Your dad created some stupid saltwater spring and flooded the entire city. My mom created the olive tree. The people of Athens saw that her gift was better and named the city after her, she said with proudness in her voice. Huh, they must really love olives. Oh, just forget it. Now, if she created pizza, that I could totally understand. I said forget it. She snapped at him. Naruto crossed his arms. Ya yeah, no, what? You and Waterhead over there, sure are fussing a lot. I didn't know you guys were having a married people argument. But ya yeah, know what? Carry on. Just don't make out in front of me and Groves over here. We want to keep our food down. Percy and Annabeth sputtered then blushed. They glared at Naruto who burst out in laughter, then the two glared at each other and looked away with burning cheeks. Traffic slowed them down in Queens. By the time they got into Manhattan, it was raining and the sun was setting. Argus dropped the kids off at Greyhound Station on the Upper East Side, Naruto checked out a soggy flyer on a mailbox that had a picture of a smiling Percy on it. Naruto squinted his eyes trying to read it. The words floated and swirled around switching places. It read, Eva Uyo Nice HTSIOB. He squeezed his eyes shut and shook his head. He opened his eyes and tried to read it again. It now read, Have you seen this boy? He raised a blonde brow but quickly looked away when Percy saw the flyer and ripped it down before Annabeth and Grover could notice. He narrowed his blue orbs at his nephew. Just what was he hiding? Argus unloaded their bags and made sure they got their bus tickets, he then got back in the van and drove off. The eye on the back of his hand watching them as he went further down the road. Naruto heard Grover and Percy chatting about the sea boy's mother. How she married this dude named Smelly Gabe just to protect Percy from monsters that tried to attack him. How stinky and smelly Gabe was. Percy's mother, Sally, 
must have truly loved him if she was willing to do all of that just for one child. Naruto thought about his mother. His father told him that her name was Kashina Uzumaki. A fun, loud-mouthed, hot-headed, strong, brash and fearless woman who loved him very much. He then grunted when an image of a woman with a kind and goofy smile, violet eyes, long beautiful flowing red hair and pale skin popped into his mind. When he first met her when he was just 16. He met her in his mindscape when he was trying to control this thing sealed inside called Nine Tails. He remembered what they were talking about. Her childhood, how she met Kronos whose alias was Minato Namikaze in the night he was born. He then saw an image of a giant fox with nine tails and a demonic red eyes and slit pupils. They didn't see eye to eye at first, but during time, they became the best of friends. Naruto tried to wonder where Kurama was now. He knew that he was still sealed inside of him, but why couldn't he sense him? It's like something or someone blocked Kurama off from him. The rain kept coming down, a bit harder this time. The four got restless waiting for the bus and decided to use one of Grover's apples to play hacky sack. Naruto asked how to play, and when Annabeth demonstrated, he took the apple and bounced it on his head, feet, knee, elbow, nose and index finger. Annabeth looked impressed and bounced the apple on her knee, elbow, shoulder, she just bounced it anywhere. Percy tried to do it like the two blondes but the apple bounced off his knee and headed straight towards Grover's mouth. Grover gasped and chomped down into the apple. He swallowed it, seeds, core, stem and all. He then blushed and tried to apologize. But the three just stared at him for a few seconds then shared good laugh. Naruto praised Grover's abilities of eating something in just one bite. That slow bus finally showed up. The quartet stood in a line to board, Grover to look around, sniffing the air wildly, getting people on the bus to look at him oddly. Naruto shoved him earning a bleat from him and a frown. Naruto told Grover to knock it off. What the hell is wrong with you? Naruto demanded in a whisper. I uh, I smell my favorite food, Grover responded in a whisper, enchiladas, but then again. I smell something else. Maybe it's nothing. Something isn't right. Everything and everyone is acting strange. Grover kept looking around while chewing on his bottom lip. Annabeth kept slapping her magical cap against her thigh and Percy was looking over his shoulder wondering what was going on. A popping noise rang through Naruto's ear, the same noise he got whenever he sensed a monster. One of the perks of being a son of Kronos. His father controlled monsters and Naruto could sense when one was around. His hand reached into his rectangular black pouch that was strapped to his right thigh. He pulled out a kanai and hid it inside his sleeve with a solemn look. Annabeth pushed Naruto and Percy in a seat with her while Grover jumped in a seat that was across from them. She clamped her hands down on both boys' knees, Naruto, Percy. An old lady had just boarded the bus. She wore a crumpled velvet dress, lace gloves, a shapeless orange knit that shadowed her face and she carried a big paisley purse. When she tilted her head up, Percy shrunk down in his seat and his breathing sped up. The whiskered teen saw this and Percy had met this person or thing before. Behind her were two other old ladies, same evil look, same gnarled hands, same dress, same bag, same gloves. Triplets from hell. They sat in the front row, right behind the driver, the two on aisle crossed their legs over the walkway. Making an X and also signaling, no one gets off here alive. The bus pulled off heading down the wet, cold road. Damn it. She didn't stay dead long, Percy whispered to Annabeth, I thought you said they could be dispelled for a lifetime. I said if you're lucky, Annabeth said, she rolled her shoulders, obviously you aren't. Naruto narrowed his blue eyes at the three old grannies. His blue eyes flashed to gold. No kidding. Those are furies. All three of him. D. Immortales. Grover whimpered with his face buried in his hands. It's okay, Annabeth told Grover. It sounded like she was telling herself that, the furies. The three worst monsters from the underworld. No problem. No problem. We'll just slip out the windows. They uh, they don't open, Grover whimpered more and more. A back exit. She suggested. She looked back and found none which caused her to deadpan. The whiskered teen growled, his gold eyes flashing with no fear at all. He punched his fist into his palm, all of that. I'll just break this damn thing open myself. Then la da da, we're out, now let me find a. No, Annabeth frowned. We'll bring attention to ourselves then.
He grumbled then sighed in defeat. Fine, but if things go bad, I'm doing it. They won't attack us with witnesses around, Percy said, will they? The mist will do its magic and make the mortals see something other than that, Naruto reminded Percy who slapped himself for asking such a stupid question. But they'll see three old ladies killing us, won't they? Annabeth had to think about it. It's hard to say, really. But we can't count on mortals for help. Maybe an exit roof. She started to look on the roof but found nothing. They entered the Lincoln Tunnel and the bus went dark except for the little lights on the aisle. It was very quiet without the sound of rain hitting the roof of the bus and the windows. Old lady number one stood up and said like she had been rehearsing, I need to use the restroom. Old lady number two nodded and said, so do I, old lady number three nodded and said, so do I. They all started coming down the aisle. I've got it, Annabeth handed her Yankees cap to Percy, take my hat. Wait, what? You're the one they want. Just turn invisible and go up the aisle. Let them pass you. Maybe you can get to the front and get away. B but you guys. There's an outside chance they may not notice us, Annabeth told him softly. You're a son of one of the big three. Your smell is overpowering. I can't just leave you. Naruto twirled the kanai in his hand. You don't have to. Because I'm coming with you. My father can control every monster known to Greek mythology. If he can do it. Then I might have a better chance doing it as well. Plus I'm the Titan Prince, they might listen to me. Annabeth thought it over and nodded. He does have a point. Just make sure you know what you're doing, she said to her fellow blonde who winked at her. Don't worry about me. I've got everything under control. Naruto looked at Percy and waved for him. Come on, Purse, let's do this. Percy liked the new nickname. Purse. It suited him. He placed on the invisibility cap and his entire body disappeared. He began to creep down the aisle with Naruto following behind him hopping from one seat to the next. They managed to get down ten rows and he ducked down into an empty seat while Naruto was across from him watching the Furies walk past them. The lead fury stopped and looked Percy's way and sniffed she then looked over at Naruto who was not in his seat anymore. She narrowed her black eyes and moved along. Naruto hopped from behind the seat to follow Percy all the way up to the front. He sat in one of the front row seats waiting for invisible Percy to press the stop emergency button, but the sound of hideous wailing caught both boys' attention as they whipped their heads over to the granny furies in the back row who weren't even granny furies even more. They turned into their true form. But more uglier. They had bat wings and gargoyle claws. Their handbags turned into fiery whips. They surrounded Annabeth and Grover, who just jumped beside her, lashing their whips with hisses. Where is it? Where? T they're not here, Annabeth yelled. They're gone. The Furies raised their whips ready to crack it upon them. Annabeth drew her dagger and Grover took out his tin can prepared to throw it at any moment now. The bus driver was distracted trying to see what the hell was going on in the back by using the rearview mirror. Invisible Percy grabbed the wheel and jerked it hard to the left, the bus slammed into the wall of tunnel. Sparks flew. Everyone was thrown out of the seats, the ones who weren't were trying their best to hold on to something. Screams and cries filled the bus. The bus driver and Invisible Percy wrestled for the wheel causing the bus to slam into the wall numerous times and earning more sparks that flew behind them. They careened out of the Lincoln Tunnel and back into the rainstorm, people and monsters were flipped and tossed around the bus, cars plowed aside like bowling pins. Somehow, some odd way, the driver found an exit. They shot off the highway, through half a dozen traffic lights and ended up barreling down one of those New Jersey rural roads where you can't believe there's so much nothing right across the river from New York. There were woods to their left, the Hudson River to their right and the bus driver looked to be heading towards the river. Naruto shot up from his seat and crashed down on the emergency brakes. The bus spun a full circle around the wet ground until it crashed into the trees. The emergency lights flashed on, the doors creaked open. The bus driver was the first to jump out and then all the other people came running out as well. Naruto groaned sitting up, he shook his head letting his vision become clear, he gasped at seeing the Furies regain their balance and begin to crack their whips out at Annabeth who jabbed her dagger at them and yelled in Greek back the hell off, and Grover bleated with fear throwing his tin cans. Invisible Percy took off the cap, he was ready to save them until, he looked at the open door, he was free to go, but his friends needed him. Naruto grunted staggering to his feet and making his favorite hand sign, 
Shadow clone jutsu, two duplicates of Naruto popped up behind in a puff of smoke. They yelled out running towards the Furies who turned their heads in his direction. The lead Fury hissed cracking her whip out ready to kick ass. But the scent he released and the gold eyes he flashed. The Furies hesitated and their black eyes widened. Clone 1 lunged forward at the second Fury who lashed her whip out at the clone's side causing it to poof away and she did the same to the last clone. As the smoke cleared, in front of them stood Naruto who narrowed his now golden eyes. Denda Skodose Afta Ta Imithian, Epidi Imai O Yos Tu Kronu, Imai O Titan Prinkipa, Ipoklin Wantai Brasta Mo Apla Tarada, You will not kill these demigods. Because I am the son of Kronos. Bow before me mere monsters. Naruto spoke in ancient Greek. The Furies looked at one another then cackled evilly. This made the quartet raise their brows. Why were they laughing damn it? Naruto is Kronos' son. They're supposed to listen to him, so what the hell was going on? The lead fury smirked causing her to look way more ugly, we got word from Kronos, she said to Naruto causing his eyes to grow bigger, he does not need you anymore. Since you apparently became a traitor to him and the titans, Naruto grew worried and fearful, ah, uh, but do not worry, Demititan, he said we may kill you however we please. D did I betray, father, H he wants me dead? Naruto thought backing away some. He then felt a spark in his chest. He clutched his chest and gritted his teeth. He arched his right hand back until it began to spark with life. Energy and chakra spiraled around in his palm until it formed into the size of a ball. The blue shined and glowed with power. Naruto broke out into a sprint and roared out. He slammed the chakra onto the Furies who screeched and hissed in pain. Big Ball Rasengan. The Furies were sent flying to the end of the bus. They groaned but stood back up their whips lashing angrier and their talons ready. They came running towards Naruto who made a hand sign ready to destroy these monsters once and for all until Percy jumped in front of the blonde with Riptide ready. The lead fury whipped her whip out at Percy making it wrap around his sword and bringing him face first to the floor of the bus. The other two furies were about to lung at Percy until Naruto grabbed both of their heads and crashed them into each other. The two furies clutched their heads with hisses and groans. The third fury regained herself and jumped out at Naruto who plunged Exoja into her midsection causing her to turn into golden dust instantly. He looked at his sword and smirked at his reflection. Annabeth got the lead fury and had her in a chokehold while Grover snatched away her whip with a grin. Grover bleated with a wince, oh, ow, ow, ouch. He cried out throwing the whip from one hand to the other, hot, hot, hot tamale, hot tamale. Percy stood up. He gasped at seeing the second fury running towards him with her talons sharpened and draw. She screamed out as she jumped forward about to devour him, until he slashed Riptide on the side of her neck causing her to screech and turn into golden dust. His eyes were widened and he panted glancing at Riptide with gratefulness. The remaining fury, the leader, was trying to get Annabeth off her back. She clawed, hissed, screeched, pulled, everything but the daughter of Athena wasn't going to give up that easily. Grover then jumped to the floor and worked on tying the lead fury's legs together with her own whip. Naruto let out a fierce battle cry before crashing into the lead fury, football style. He tackled her into the aisle before he jumped back as she tried to flap her ugly bat wings to escape. But sadly, for her, there wasn't any room to do so. So she kept falling down on her face. Naruto crossed his arms with a shake of his head watching her still try. Come on, you're not going anywhere so stop trying to escape. Zeus will destroy you all, she promised now falling on the floor and staying there, finally, and Hades will have your souls, half-bloods. What do you mean by all of that? First, you're chit-chatting about my father and now you're doing the same with my brothers. A frown spread across the titan prince's face, whose side are you on anyways? Before she could answer, Percy snapped at her in Latin, Bracas meas vesemini. Naruto translated that in his mind and frowned, confusion written all over his face. Why would she want to eat Percy's pants? He still didn't get it. Thunder shook the bus and the hair on the back of the quartet's neck stood up. Get out, now, Annabeth yelled at Percy. The group rushed outside and found the other passengers running around, screaming. We're going to die. God is ending the world, wandering around dazed or fussing at the driver. A Hawaiian shirted tourist dude snapped their photos before they could put their weapons away. Oh no, 
Our bags, Grover realized, we left our. The bus then exploded. The passengers ran for cover as the windows exploded, shards flying everywhere. Lightning shredded a huge crater in the roof, but an angry wail inside told each of them that the last remaining fury inside the bus was not dead yet. Damn it! Annabeth cursed under her breath and looked at us, we have to go. She's calling for reinforcements. That's when the group ran into the nearest woods, their foot stomping on the wet ground and their hair drenched in rain. The flames of the bus were behind them but darkness was ahead. The rain began to drench their clothes until everything on their body was wet. Naruto panted, so much for our first quest, eh. Annabeth frowned slightly but hid a small pout. Oh, shut up, Naruto. Well, he is right, Percy agreed and Naruto nodded with his signature grin. I swear to the gods, it's like you two idiots were meant for each other sometimes, the daughter of Athena grumbled. But Naruto wondered something even he didn't think he would ask himself or someone else. Will we even get out of this quest alive? Don't you all just wish you could blame something on a divine being that you can't see? Well, when you're a half-blood, you can pick any god or goddess from A to Z to blame on. A volcano erupting for no apparent reason. Ha! Huh. Pick Hephaestus. Lightning crashing down on a bus to destroy three teenagers and a goat boy. Well, oh, well. Try the king of the gods himself, Zeus. And those kids from the destroyed bus were walking through the woods along New Jersey Riverbank. The glow of New York City making the night sky yellow behind them, and the smell of the Hudson reeking in their noses. Poor Grover was shivering and braying. His goat eyes were big and he whimpered. The three kindly ones, all three at once. Annabeth was still pulling the boys along, saying, Come on, the farther away we get, the better. All our money was back there, Percy reminded her, our food and clothes, everything. Well maybe if you and Naruto hadn't decided to jump into the fight, before Annabeth could finish Naruto hopped out of her grip. Whoa. Wait a sec. Naruto frowned, you're blaming us, wise girl. You. Should. Be. On. Your. Knees. Thanking. Yes. He emphasized his point by poking her in the chest with every word but she growled and swatted his hand away with a small blush. What did you want us to do? Let you get killed? Percy asked knitting his brows at the younger blonde. You and Naruto didn't need to protect me, Percy, I would have been fine. Sliced like sandwich bread, Grover put in, but fine. Annabeth shot Grover her best Athena glare making him smile nervously at her. Oh, shut up, goat boy. Grover brayed mournfully. Tin cans. A perfectly good bag of tin cans. Naruto looked at all three of his team members. An image of a guy in his late twenties or early thirties with spiky silver hair. That cool black haired guy and Sakura popped into his mind, and he was standing in front of them with a big grin. The silver haired guy was their leader, Kakashi Hitaki, and the black haired guy name was Sasuke Uchiha. They were a squad. Cell number seven. He took a calming deep breath and tried for a smile, even if it was fake guys. Don't worry, he dug around in his pocket and finally pulled out a few bills of cash, I think I've got enough money for the trip. This is, uh, 200 mortal dollars, he then took out 30 drachmas, and drachmas. He placed the money and drachmas back into his pocket. Percy sighed out with relief, good, he muttered to himself. The quartet sloshed around mushy and sour smelling ground. They walked past twisted trees that had weird carvings on its bark. Everyone was silent for a while until Annabeth broke the quietness. Look, I. Her voice faltered causing Naruto to stare at her with a questionable look, I appreciate you and Percy coming back for us, okay. That was really brave of you guys. We're a team, right? Percy said, facing her with a small smile. Right, Naruto nodded, plus, one time my sensei told me, those who break the rules are considered scum, his eyes looked at Percy, Grover and Annabeth, hey. But he also said that those who abandon their comrades or friends are worse than scum. And I'll never abandon my friends, ya yeah, know. Hearing that made the others smile brightly at Naruto. It was good to know that he had their backs. It was silent for a few more silent steps until Annabeth broke it again. It's just that, well, if you died, aside from the fact that it would really suck for you too, it would mean the quest was over. This may be my only shot of seeing the real world. I've wanted this ever since I was a little kid. 
The thunderstorm finally stopped causing the city glow to fade behind them, leaving them in total darkness. The only thing that lit up the woods was Naruto and Annabeth's blonde hair. Naruto combed his fingers through his cropped hair, so, you didn't leave camp half-blood since you were, what? Seven? He asked her and Percy looked at her like he'd been wondering the same thing. No. Only on those short field trips, my father. The history professor, Percy interrupted earning a shove from Naruto. He glared at the older blonde who glared back, only meaner. Yeah. You see, I it didn't work out with me living in a normal home. Camp Half-Blood is my home. It's always been my home, she explained quickly, afraid that someone might stop her, at camp you train and train until you become stronger. And that's cool and everything, but, the real world is where the monsters are. It'll determine if you're worthy of the title, a hero, or not. Naruto heard the doubt in her voice even though she tried to hide it. If you ask me, I think you're a good hero. And I'm not saying that to make you feel better, I mean it. Percy nodded in agreement, yeah, plus you're great with that knife. You guys really think so? Anybody who can chokehold a fury is okay in my book. Naruto searched for Annabeth's hand, and when he finally found it, he laced his fingers through hers with a grin. You're amazing, Annabeth. Really? You shouldn't stress over if you're any good or not when you already are. Cuz that's just plain stupid, ya yeah, know? The daughter of Athena wore a small blush over her cheeks before smiling softly at Naruto who flushed realizing he was still holding her hand. Their hands broke apart and huge blushes washed over their faces as they grinned at each other sheepishly. Grover sensed Percy's jealousy takeover as he watched the two. He smirked when Percy grumbled at Naruto. The whiskered teen couldn't help but feel different with the daughter of Athena. He felt all mushy and stuff with Clarice and Selena, yes, but Annabeth? It was like he had a small bit of feelings for her but he also loved her as a little sister or a best friend. He pushed that thought away for a while, but later he would keep questioning himself about his feelings for the grey-eyed girl. Their moment was disturbed by Grover who blew into his reed pipes, the sound screeched through the other's ears. It was like an owl being tortured to death. Hey, my reed pipes still work. Grover cried out with a cheeky grin, man, if only I could remember that, find the path, song, we could totally get out of these. Naruto growled snatching the reed pipes out of Grover's hands, he was about to break it over his knee, until the satyr slammed his hoof down on Naruto's foot causing the blonde to cry out in pain and throw the reed pipe in the air. Luckily, Percy caught it and tossed it to Grover who grabbed it with a happy smile then glared at Naruto who huffed. I told you I would break that thing if you started playing it, Naruto said, honestly, how do you satyrs stand that sound? He mumbled under his breath. Percy laughed but groaned as he walked straight into a tree. A bruise formed on his forehead, Naruto pointed at Percy letting out a good laugh. After another mile or so, Percy kept slamming into trees or tripping over their roots. Groans, yelps and cursing filled the woods. There was suddenly light up ahead. The colors of a neon sign. The quartet could smell food making their mouths water. It was fried, delicious, greasy, mouth-watering, food. They kept walking until they saw a deserted two-lane road through the trees. On the other side was a closed-down gas station, a tattered billboard for a 1990s movie and one open business that happened to be the source of the neon light shining and the good smell. Okay, so it wasn't a fast food restaurant. It happened to be one of those weird roadside curio shops that sold lawn flamingos, wooden Indians and cement grizzly bears. The main building was a long, low warehouse, surrounded by acres of statuary. There was a neon sign above that was glowing in cursive neon letters, and they in English. Annabeth, Percy and Naruto's dyslexia began to swirl into session. Percy knitted his raven brows in frustration, what the hell does that even say? He asked Naruto and Annabeth. He mentally slapped himself forgetting that they couldn't read it either. Annabeth struggled trying to read the sign as well, how should I know? Naruto narrowed his blue orbs at the sign that looked like a bunch of doodles, he blinked a couple of times before seeing the words change to, well, words but they looked like gibberish. It read, T-U-A-N-Y means N-G-R-D-A-N-E Goman M-I-U-O-R-P-E-M. He growled with his eyes squeezed shut and opened them once more to see that it now read, Auntie M's Garden Gnome Emporium. Auntie M's Garden Gnome Emporium, he translated with a sigh. Annabeth and Percy stared at him in awe. You can read that? Annabeth questioned him. Disbelief was crawling in her voice. 
She just couldn't believe it, how? Don't you have dyslexia? Yeah. I do, but, sometimes if I concentrate hard enough, it'll just slip away for a moment, Naruto said. He then grinned cheekily, probably one of the perks of being a Demititan. Annabeth rolled her gray eyes with a small jealous pout. Flanking the entrance, as advertised, were two cement garden gnomes. Ugly bearded little runts smiling and waving all creepy like as if they were getting ready for picture day. Naruto shivered at seeing the little statues, he shot glares at every one of them earning a snicker from Percy. Naruto clutched his stomach that sent out a hungry growl. He grimaced before his ears perked up following the tasty smell that filled the air. Hey! Grover warned. He looked very unsure about the place. The lights are on inside, Annabeth told them, maybe it's still open. Snack bar? Percy asked wistfully, with a grin. Snack bar, indeed, she agreed with a nod. Then what are we waiting for? Naruto asked, let's eat, I hope they serve ramen here. Grover hissed at the three, are you three crazy? This place is weird? Very weird? Naruto looked back at him with a small smile. Sure. These little things and bears and everything else in here is creepy, but, you forget, we need food. And this boy ain't gonna starve. The satyr sighed tapping his index fingers together nervously. The front lot was a forest of statues, cement animals, cement children, cement lovers and even a satyr playing the reed pipes with a fearful look on its face, which gave Grover the creeps big time. He bleated matching the statue satyr's fearful look, looks like my uncle Ferdinand. I'm sure everything looks like your uncle Ferdy whoever, Naruto mumbled. They stopped at the warehouse door. Don't knock, please, Grover pleaded. I smell monsters. The son of Kronos was about to shoot Grover a smart ass comment until he swallowed at hearing a popping noise echo through his ears. A monster really was here. He couldn't get monsters to obey him since his father deemed him a traitor to their side. Remembering that made him sad, his own father, who he loved dearly, called him a traitor. He was truly hurt. Naruto's heart ached every time he thought about it. Why, you're right, he muttered in agreement. Grover heard the mutter and cheered with happiness, but we aren't leaving. We need to eat. Traveling on an empty stomach isn't good. You'll be dead in no time if you do so. So suck it up and let's go in. That's when the door creaked open, and standing in front of them was a tall Middle Eastern woman. At least, uh, they thought she was Middle Eastern. Because she wore a long black gown that covered everything on her body except for her hands and her hair was completely veiled. Her eyes glinted behind a pair of obsidian black sunglasses. She looked beautiful and elegant, so this old lady must have been quite the primary choice back in her day. Her voice sounded vaguely Middle Eastern too, she spoke, children, it is too late to be out alone at this time. Where are your parents for heaven's sake? There, um, Annabeth started to say, we're orphans, Percy blurted out. Orphans? The word sounded like an alien in the old lady's mouth why surely not naruto sighed before pouting pitifully at the woman his bottom lip quivered and tears welled up in his eyes he looked like one of those cute homeless puppies that you see on tv we d don't know where to go w we survive off scraps and metals one time we even tried tt to eat each other in his mind he was thinking this must be the monster but what is she percy stared at the woman who gasped with a shocked look uh yeah that happened we got separated from our caravan. Our circus caravan. The mean and horrible ringmaster told us to meet him at a gas station if we ever got lost. Though he could have been talking about another gas station. Or either he forgot. But, uh, we're definitely lost. Is that food I smell? The woman clasped her hands together and a sad smile crossed her lips. Oh, you poor children, she said. You must come in immediately. I am Auntie M. Go straight through to the back of the warehouse, please. There's a dining area there. They thanked her and walked away to where she said. Annabeth muttered to Percy and Naruto, circus caravan? Almost eating each other? Percy shrugged, always have a strategy, right? Naruto muttered, I thought mine was pretty creative and neat. Annabeth looked at them back and forth until she pinched the bridge of her nose mumbling. Percy's head is full of kelp and Naruto's brain is made out of ramen. Hey. Lady? The whiskered blonde called to Auntie M, you got any ramen here? Literally, Annabeth shook her head. The warehouse was filled with more statues. They were in different poses, wearing different clothes and expressions. 
Most expressions were horrified or frightened to death. They looked pretty big to put in all one spot, they were all life size. But everyone didn't pay attention to that. They were frustrated, tired, and hungry. But Naruto rubbed his ears as the popping sound increased. His eyes averted over to Grover, who was chewing on his nails and whimpering. Naruto somewhat felt sorry for doing this to poor Grover, but they were hungry and needed some food, so he was just going to wait until they were stuffed and not exhausted anymore. There in the dining area was a fast food counter with a grill, a soda fountain, a pretzel heater, and a nacho cheese dispenser. Everything you could want, plus a steel table pulled out in the front. Naruto knitted his brows in disappointment. The woman didn't have anything for ramen, she really was evil if she didn't have ramen. Please, sit down, sit down, Auntie M told them as she locked the door causing Grover and Naruto to swallow. Awesome, yay. Percy said and Naruto mumbled sarcastically. Naruto sat next to Grover while Annabeth and Percy sat on the other side. Um, uh, we don't have any money, ma'am, Grover told Auntie M reluctantly. Auntie M smiled so evil it made Maleficent jealous of her. No, no, children. No money. It is a special case. For being such nice little orphans. Thank you, ma'am, the grey-eyed blonde said. Auntie M stiffened as if Annabeth said something very offensive to her, but she relaxed just as quickly with a straining smile. Percy shrugged it off but Naruto kept narrowing his blue orbs at the woman suspiciously. Quite all right, Annabeth. My god, child, you have such beautiful grey eyes. Don't remember introducing ourselves, Naruto thought fiddling with his hands, what does this lady have against Annabeth? Maybe she has some rivalry with Athena, just like Arachne did. Their hostess disappeared behind the counter to begin cooking, but minutes later, she returned with a tray filled with double cheeseburgers, vanilla shakes with whipped cream and a cherry on top and XXL servings of fries. Naruto dug into his food with a happy grin even though he knew this lady was bad news. His brain was telling him he needed some food, as was his belly. And this cheeseburger, thing. Amazing. He never had anything like it before and the fries and shake was mouth savoring as well. Percy was halfway through his burger but forgot to breath. Annabeth slurped her shake with happiness. Grover picked at the fries and eyed the tray's wax paper liner as if he might eat that but was too nervous to do so. His head then snapped up looking around nervously. W what's that hissing noise? He asked scared and worriedly, I hear hissing. Percy listened but didn't hear anything. Annabeth shook her head while Naruto was thinking hard on who or what Auntie M really was. His skin paled and he gasped but turned it into a cough covering his mouth. He knew who this woman as disguise really was. Damn it. It's Medusa of all people. We've got to get out of here now. Hissing? Auntie M asked with a slightly confused frown. Perhaps you hear the deep fryer oil. You have such keen ears, Grover. I take vitamins. For my ears, so I can hear better. That is very admirable, but please, relax, eat. Naruto was getting tired of this, so he would stop it. If the Furies wouldn't listen to him, what would make Medusa listen to him? Uh, Mrs. Auntie M. Auntie M raised her brows with a sweet smile. He balled his fists tightly, I was wondering if you knew anything about, he muttered under his breath. Was that dear? She asked him leaning up closer. I said, I was wondering if you knew about. Naruto gestured for her to come closer which she did. He smirked evilly me about to kick your ass? His bandaged fist slammed right into her face. She screeched and was sent flying to the other side of the room. She crashed into statues causing dust and dirt to fly around. Naruto. Annabeth, Percy and Grover cried. He shot them glares. She's a damn monster. A monster. Medusa in fact. That's why it looked like she had something against Annabeth. Grover shot up from his seat with a horrified expression matching the statues. Medusa? I was right about a monster, but Medusa? How did you know that? Annabeth questioned her fellow blonde who shrugged. She deadpanned at him but waved it off. Hey, guys? Grover got their attention, here's a fun thought. Let's go before we get turned into them, he gestured to the statues. Sorry, Groves, Naruto told him solemnly. He took out Exoja and twirled it in his hand. Medusa jumped out of the rubble with a hiss. She snatched off her sunglasses and veil. Naruto looked back at Percy and the others. Hide, I'll try and distract her. Annabeth hesitated but slapped on her Yankees cap turning invisible. 
Grover ran in the back shouting, Maya! Non-stop and Percy uncapped Riptide backing away in a corner. It's just you and me now, Snake Lady, Naruto told her and she cackled evilly. His nose scrunched in disgust at her laugh. Like a witch's laugh. Medusa caught her breath. Oh, my lovely Titan Prince, do you really think your powers of controlling monsters will work on me? Besides, Lord Kronos deemed you a traitor so I and other monsters may kill you however we please. She lunged at him with her talons ready to claw out his eyes, he sidestepped causing her to skid across the ground. Her venomous green eyes narrowed at the blonde whose eyes avoided hers by looking beside his foot to see the broken head of one of the statues, he quickly picked it up and threw it Medusa's way. The head cracked right into her forehead which she clawed at because of the pain. Seeing his opportunity to get away, he took off down a row of statues, he ducked behind a statue of two lovers hugging each other. Naruto kept peeking out every few seconds to see if Medusa was coming for him. Luckily she wasn't and he exhaled sharply through his mouth. Naruto's shoulders tensed at hearing the sound of a sigh, he whipped his head to his right and pressed the tip of his sword to the throat of Percy? Hey, whoa. Percy spread his hands dropping Riptide, lower that, will you? I don't want to get shish kebobbed by you. Naruto lowered Exoja with knitted blonde brows. Don't do that. He hissed at the raven haired teen, I thought you were Medusa for a second. Sorry. Percy apologized sheepishly and quietly, I don't feel right, I think maybe she might have did something to our food. So that's how she traps tourists here, with that disgusting, mouth watering, greasy things you people call food. Hey, you eat ramen almost every day. No, I don't. I only eat every morning, afternoon, and when I go to sleep. See, almost every day. Jackson if you knew what was best for you, you'd shut the hell up right now. Sorry, sorry. Forgot you had a temper. Naruto growled but waved it off, he would get the prissy later on for that. Add that to the list of things. He would do to get back at Percy. His ears perked up at the sound of hissing and footsteps. He peeked out to see Medusa pouncing on every statue trying to find him and the others. He looked back at Percy. All right, wet boy wonder, I hope you're ready. Ready for what? Percy asked completely lost from what the blue-eyed boy was talking about. Ready to kill Medusa once I distract her scaly ass. Listen, I'll distract, you find a mirror in the meantime and cut off Medusa's head just like your namesake did. Percy narrowed his sea-green eyes at Naruto. Me? Are you crazy? I'll get stoned. Why can't you do it? Naruto simply replied, cause you're the god's damn leader of this suicidal quest. He looked to see Medusa was inching closer to them, okay. Go now. I've got her right where I want her. Percy inhaled before tightening his grip on Riptide, he nodded and scurried away leaving the blonde behind who got to his feet with a frown. I hope I'm doing the right thing by sending Percy out to do something like that, Naruto thought. He peeked out. A look of confusion crossed over his face, Medusa wasn't there anymore. Suspense grew in the pit of Naruto's stomach. He waited for her to return but she never did. He turned around ready to walk to another statue until he gasped for breath. A hand wrapped around his neck, trying to choke the life out of him. He gagged and gasped, he knew it was Medusa so his eyes were squeezed shut tightly. She slammed his back against a wall with a hiss. Exoja fell from his hand and he gasped for breath without opening a single eye. Medusa growled but smirked as she lowered her head down to allow her snakes to roam around the whiskered teen's face. The snakes tried to go inside his mouth which was clamped shut, inside his nose that he kept scrunching and poked at his eyes that he would not allow to open. Medusa tried her very best at making Naruto open his eyes but nothing worked. He wasn't as dumb as he looked. She lifted her head eyeing his handsome face that she took a liking to. Her hand caressed his right whiskered cheek while the other cupped his chin. Come, Naruto, join us, for millennia, the gods have treated us badly abusing their titles, their domains to make fools out of us lower people. But if you help us, rejoin Kronos, then there will be peace. The Titans will rule once more. That is a good thing. We don't just need our lord, but we yearn for a prince to lead us as well. You are the crown prince, Naruto Uzumaki. Live up to your title. He grunted, snapping his head side to side not wanting her to touch his face. I'm not going to discuss that here while the others are around. So shut up you son of bit. Incoming. 
Shouting that was Grover who came flying down towards Medusa with a tree branch, he cried out before smashing it behind Medusa's head making her clutch her head with a hiss backing away from Naruto and scowling Grover. You infernal satyr, you'll be joining your kind any second now. That was for my uncle Ferdinand, you loser. Why you? Before she could finish, Naruto jumped on top of her tackling her to the ground. His hands swatting at hers trying to find her neck, once they did, he began to choke her which she screeched at. Her piercing venomous green eyes locked with bright gold like blue eyes that widened in fear. His screams filled the shop causing Annabeth to shimmer back into existence with a worried look. Percy joined her sharing the same look. Their eyes widened at seeing Naruto, their friend, questmate, turned into stone. Medusa panted before throwing his cement-like body to the side which cracked a little. Percy shook his head in disbelief. No no, Naruto couldn't be dead, he couldn't be? Could he? Anger built up inside of the raven teen who found a new strength, he stomped over to Medusa who was brushing herself off ready to make her next statues until Percy swiped his sword to the side. The sound of flesh cutting open rang through the shop as well as screeching. Medusa has been decapitated for the second time in Greek mythology. He glared down at the head of Medusa that was rolling around her limp body. Her body turned into gold dust that seeped through the ground slowly. Warm ooze was gushing around Percy's ankles. He couldn't help but look at little dying snakes gnawing at his shoelaces. Grover bleated before landing safely next to Annabeth and Percy. He grimaced at Medusa's head in disgust. Gross. Ah, sorry, mega gross. Annabeth came up to Percy with her gray eyes locked on the sky. She told him, don't move. She picked up the veil and covered it over Medusa's head. She picked up the veil-wrapped head with ooze still dripping from it. He saw the look on her face. Naruto. She bit her bottom lip, holding back tears that were about to build up. Percy was about to wrap her in a loving embrace until someone whacked him on the back of his head. He winced glaring at Naruto. Naruto. They cried out in joy, relief, anger, every feeling was in their system for the blonde right now. They encased him in a group hug. H hey. He grunted with a half smile, what's going on, did you kill Medusa? Annabeth, Grover and Percy backed off him with mild glares. She jabbed him roughly in the chest, we thought you were dead, I mean, we saw you get turned into stone. Naruto blinked stupidly. Hum, oh, that was my shadow clone, he grinned rubbing the back of his neck sheepishly, guess I probably should have told you gah. He clutched his head with a wince and wailed when Annabeth tugged at his ear with a glare scarier than that girl Sakura's. You had me worried. You should have told us. You can be such an ignoramus at times, gods, I swear, next time you pull a stunt like that. You'll be losing an ear. She stretched his ear then released it causing him to whimper rubbing his, abused, ear. She sighed, at least we have a spoil of war. A what now? Percy asked. Spoils of war. Annabeth repeated, you know, like you and Percy's minotaur horn. Just don't unwrap the head. Even though it's dead, it can still petrify you. Oh goody, Naruto mumbled under his breath. Percy recapped his sword with a tired look. Together, they stumbled to the back of the warehouse. Thank the gods that they found some old grocery bags behind the snack bar, now they could double wrap old snack lady's head. After doing that they decided to plop down at the picnic table they were eating at. Every one of them too exhausted to speak. Grover shuffled his hooves on the ground with a sigh. Naruto looked at Percy and asked, So, your daddy is the one to blame for this, correct? Percy shot his half-uncle a mild glare and pointed at him. He's your older brother. Plus we should be thanking Athena for the monster since she was the one to turn Medusa into what she is. Annabeth then rounded up on Percy with an irritated look. Athena, Naruto's right about blaming Poseidon. Medusa was his girlfriend, they decided to have a date in Athena's temple. My mother found out and turned Medusa into a monster. And her two sisters helped her get into the temple, so they suffered the consequences as well. They became the three Gorgons, that's why Medusa had a problem with me. She wanted to preserve you as a nice statue. She's still sweet on your dad. You probably reminded her of him. Percy's face was burning brightly, so it is my fault? Oh no. It's your fault seaweed brain. You know, what? Just forget it. You're impossible. Really? Well, you're insufferable. Oh yeah? You're going to shut up. Naruto finished for Percy. 
you two are giving me a migraine, Grover complained, and satyrs don't even get migraines. Now. What are we going to do with the head? Percy puckered his lips to the side thinking. After a minute or two, he got up, I'll be right back. Annabeth raised her brows. Where are you going? He ignored her and walked off disappearing behind a corner. Annabeth growled shooting up and following him leaving Naruto and Grover by themselves. Man, those two seriously act like Athena and Poseidon, Naruto told Grover who chuckled. Yeah, I wonder where Percy went to, who knows? It was silent for a few seconds until Grover asked, Naruto? Do you, uh, like Annabeth? A confused look marred his face. Of course I like her, she's my friend. Not like that. I mean, do you like her, like her? Grover pressed. Naruto blinked with confusion in Grover's side, the way you like Clarice and Selena? That way? Naruto thought on that for a second and replied, I'll know my feelings for her when the time comes. Grover stared at the blonde but smiled softly at him. Before he could ask anything else, Percy returned along with Annabeth carrying a box. He sat the box on the table and dumped Medusa's head inside. He took out a delivery slip and filled it out. The Gods, Mount Olympus, 600th floor, Empire State Building. New York, New York with best wishes, Percy Jackson. Uh, Percy? The Gods aren't going to like that. Grover warned the son of Poseidon who dug in his pocket taking out a few drachmas he picked up, they'll think you're impertinent. Before Percy could mail it, Naruto stopped him and grabbed a sheet of paper. He took the pen from his half-nephew and scribbled some words down on the paper before capping the pen and throwing it to the side. Percy, Annabeth and Grover leaned down some to read it. They paled. It was worse than what Percy did. Dear family, my first part of the quest was a little terrifying even though I'm like, the greatest and only Demitidon ever. Big brother Zeus, our nephew and big brother Poseidon's son has sent us spoils of war. Medusa's head. Be careful when you take it out, it's still dripping I think. Anyways, Zeus, I just wanted to tell you that you're the worst brother of all time. I don't like you. I'm pretty sure your kids don't even like you, and if they say they do, they're lying just to make you feel good about yourself. It happens. Oh and will you stop being such a immature big ass baby? So your rattle got taken and you're having a fit? Boo hoo. Tell mother Rhea to craddle you and give you a bottle. Oh, and mother Rhea, if you're reading this make sure you give big bro his bottle, he tends to be cranky now and then. Big sister Hestia. How the hell are you doing? Just wanted to say, hey, since, you're like, the best big sister of the century. Demeter and Hera, guys don't worry, I still love you guys. Big brothers Hades and Poseidon? You two are the best. I know Hades isn't there, but Hermes, when you go down to the underworld, tell Big Bro that I love him and he's awesome and that I'll see him soon. Big Bro P, keep Amphitrite happy or I'll take her off your hands. Mother Rhea, don't worry about me, I'll be there with the Bolt and Percy in a few days. Believe it, and when I see you, I'll make sure to give you the best hug of all time since you're the only mother figure I have around. Keep everyone in check. I love you. Sincerely, Naruto Uzumaki, son of Kronos. Naruto held out his hand and Percy dropped the drachmas in his palm. Naruto threw them inside the box, not forgetting his letter, and sealed it closed. There was a sound like a cash register, the package floated off the table and into the air with a pop. Percy looked at Annabeth as if he dared her to say anything, she didn't. She looked resigned to the fact that him and Naruto loved to piss off the gods. Come on, she muttered, we need a new plan. Naruto smiled at her and stuffed his hands inside his pockets. Well, let's hit the road, shall we? And there it is. Another successful chapter. I bet you all are wondering about that Narubath moment, aren't y'all? I know that you're going to be full of questions about their future relationship, and when Grover asked Naruto about him liking Annabeth. Dot hey hey. You're just going to have to see for yourself, and I want to add some people to the harem. Zoe Nightshade and Calypso. I just had these thoughts about them for the future. Now. What else did I want to say? Hmm. Oh yeah. Before you click out of this, check out this sneak peek of my new story that is indeed a Percy Jackson, Naruto crossover. But why not add Heroes of Olympus? Here it is. Gods. The child of Earth, lost hero. Come to me. I need you, just like him. You were just like him during his youth. So happy so young, so naive. Come to me. 
Come to me. A teen gasped shooting up from his sleep. His entire body was drowned in sweat and pants escaped his lips. Blonde hair spiked uncontrollably in his head, three thin birthmarks were on both sides of his cheeks, they were whisker marks, he was a handsome youth and his eyes were blue as the sky itself. His hand reached up to touch his hair. He ran his fingers through the spiky locks, he sighed out in relief as if he thought his head was gone or something. Hey, you okay? asked a male voice. The blonde jumped in surprise at hearing the voice and turned to its owner. The voice belonged to a teenage boy around his age. He had tanned skin, bright sea green eyes and a friendly smile. He also smelled faintly of a sea breeze. Whoa, it's okay, it's okay. I'm Percy. We found you outside of the gates of camp unconscious and dot and you know, we brought you in. You shouldn't be awake so early though. The blonde rubbed his bandaged arm absentmindedly. Huh. Ya know that's weird. Because I was at Ichiraku's having some celebratory ramen with Sakura and Ino since it was wait a minute. Are you telling me I was just knocked out beside the gates? Percy nodded folding his arms over his orange shirt that the blonde was starting to take interest in. It's okay. If it makes you feel any better, the same thing happened to me. Except. I was fighting a minotaur and my mom and my best friend, Grover, who's a satyr was with me. Naruto blinked stupidly. What's a satyr? On the 600th floor of the Empire State Building, the Olympians sat in their thrones and listened to Poseidon and Zeus quarrel once more. Except Zeus's face was turning dark and stormy with anger like usual. Plus that funny little vein began to show up across his temple to his forehead. A buff black-haired guy leaned on the armrest of his throne massaging his right temple. Damn it! He hissed. Ares did indeed love a good fight. The fight where there was going to be blood, gore and fists involved, are they done being pussies yet? Nope, said a god with a sunny and flashy smile. His teeth were so white that they could blind you. He had shoulder-length sun-kissed blonde hair, tan skin and eyes blue as the sky. Apollo then sighed out in relief when the mother of the first generation of gods had arrived wearing a traditional white flowing Greek dress that made her look more of a goddess than a titaness. Thank order. You're finally here, Grams. Now you can stop Pops and Uncle P from fussing. Ray's meadow green eyes averted from her grandson to her two sons. She sighed shaking her head. Here we go again, she thought as she made her way over to them. Poseidon sensing their mother coming clamped his mouth shut while Zeus kept thundering. Rhea, now beside them, shot her youngest child a stern look. Zeus swallowed and looked down frowning. Why is it that every time I step away for one second, one, you two always fight? I mean, by order you're acting like your children for heaven's sake. Rhea swatted both their arms and they winced, for shame on both of you. If you were still children I'd ground you, literally. Now, be good boys and take your seats. Zeus pouted along with Poseidon trailing over to their thrones mumbling. Yes, mother, and taking their seats. They still sent glares at each other and the goddess of wisdom heaved a sigh. Thank you, grandmother. Let's begin the meeting. There was a poof of smoke in the middle of the council room. As the smoke cleared, Hermes, late as usual, appeared in front of them in his usual business attire. In his arms was a light brown delivery box. He placed it on the floor with an exhale wiping his forehead using the back of his hand. Hera's eyebrows rose in curiosity. What is this, Hermes? she asked him. Special delivery, he told her. Apollo grinned brightly. He loved special things. Well, what the hell are we waiting for? Open that bad boy up, Herm. Hermes unsealed the box and took out a note and delivery slip, huh? It's from Poseidon's son, Percy Jackson. Poseidon's face seemed to light up like a Christmas tree while Zeus grumbled. Hermes shrugged throwing the slip behind him and he grimaced pulling out Medusa's head, oh, gross. He is not happy with us. Zeus thundered with rage. Is this some joke? Demeter rolled her eyes. Here we go again. She muttered to Hera who shook her head in annoyance at her husband's rantings. They really were annoying. Rhea patted her son's shoulder softly, calm down, my little storm cloud. Apollo, Hermes and Ares snickered at the nickname causing Zeus to flush with embarrassment. Mother, he cried out, not around them, please. Sorry, my little I mean, Zeus. Rhea smiled softly at her baby boy. Zeus regained his manliness then instantly and narrowed his electric blue eyes at the head of Medusa. My son beheaded Medusa first, 
and he did not send it to me as an insult, he said, but your son wants to do such a thing, his narrowed eyes landing on Poseidon. The king of the sea spread his hands. I didn't know he would do this, he admitted, the boy gets his temper from someone. I wonder who. He muttered to himself in thought, he has to return your bolt and waves of monsters are after him either trying to get it or kill him. Can you blame him? The other Olympians and Rhea nodded to that. Before Zeus could snap, Hermes took out a note from the box waving it in the air getting their attention. I found a note, he announced. Read it, Zeus ordered and Hermes did so, dear family. The first part of the quest was a little terrifying even though I'm like, the greatest and only Demitidon ever. Big brother Zeus, our nephew and big brother Poseidon's son has sent us spoils of war. Medusa's head. Be careful when you take it out, it's still dripping I think. Anyways, Zeus, I just wanted to tell you that you're the W. Hermes's jaw dropped reading to himself. His eyes skimmed through the lines and he dropped the note with a shocked look, dude's gonna die. Athena frowned slightly, what does it say? She asked her half-brother, he picked up the note and handed it to her so that she could read it for herself. Her grey eyes widened at what the note had said, she couldn't believe that boy would write such a thing to them. The last person that thought that way about her family was Arachne, and she suffered the consequences, little. Artemis leaned over from her throne to read it as well. She gasped knitting her brows, he's insulting Zeus? That's her daddy who she loves dearly, you know, since she is technically his favorite daughter and all. Zeus took the note from his daughter and his eyes skimmed the lines. His eyes turned stormy and his eyes glared daggers at the note. The note sparked with electricity then blew up. The king of the gods grinded his teeth together and his face turned red with anger. Aye aye aye. What did it say? Ares asked eagerly. Hermes whispered it to him and the other Olympians scrambled over to them to hear it. Their eyes widened in shock. Ares laughed, a big baby, huh? Hey, grandma? Rhea turned to her war-crazed grandson, dad's looking pretty upset there. Maybe you should burp him, he started to laugh again and he slapped his knee. Apollo snickered, yeah, don't forget to put him to bed with his bottle. Hermes chuckled and held up his index finger, and tucked the poor baby in, always tuck the baby in. Artemis shot each of them glares. Would you three hush? She hissed, father is already angry as it is. Aphrodite was full of giggles while filing her perfect nails, that Naruto boy is just a character. She then sighed dreamily, I wonder how good he is in bed though. Well you aren't going to find out, Aphrodite, Rhea scowled the love goddess who pouted, my son isn't becoming one of your lovesick puppies. All right. Fine. Aphrodite grumbled. But a smirk found its way on her red lips, doesn't mean I can't toy with his love life, she thought with a giggle. Oh man, she had his entire love life planned out. Son? Hera repeated, Mother, you did not birth him, therefore he is your stepson. Hera, my daughter, do you have a problem with your brother? Why, I yes, yes in fact, I do. He is you know whose child. So are you. Rhea pointed out causing Hera's mouth to open and close, we shouldn't judge a book by its cover. Hera, Zeus, Demeter, Poseidon. Naruto is your brother who is trying his best for you all to accept him. You will not treat him with disrespect or fear him. You are the children of Kronos as well. Therefore others should be frightened of you as well, but they're not. So you won't do the same to your little brother, am I understood? Yes, mother. Zeus, Hera, Demeter and Poseidon muttered glancing down. Rhea shot serious looks to the other Olympians, that goes for the rest of you. The others nodded lightly biting their bottom lips. She released a sigh. I swear the only one in this family who knows some respect for others is Hestia. She clasped her hands together with a slightly worried look. Oh, Kashina, I promised you long ago that I'd protect Naruto. And I assure you that I will try my very best. The prophecy. It's coming true. It's beginning. My infernal husband is returning and is trying to manipulate poor Naruto. Naruto. Be safe, and make to Olympus all right. You've gotta be kidding me, Percy said, this place is practically a dump. They camped out in the woods, a hundred yards from the main road, in a marshy clearing that local kids had obviously been using for parties. The ground was littered with flattened soda cans and fast food wrappers. Since Naruto was technically a sage and his sage mode was connected to nature so he cared a lot about nature. 
Seeing this made him frown and sad a little like Grover was. This place was probably a beautiful area before it got littered by some stupid kids. They'd taken some food from Auntie M's but they weren't crazy enough to light a fire to dry their damp clothes. The Furies and Medusa was enough for one day. They certainly didn't need anything else to bother them. No kidding, Naruto said. He heaved a great sigh, but this'll have to do for now. So suck it up and be a a boyish kind of stereotype of a man. Percy frowned. I'm a man. No you aren't. Where's the facial hair? It's. Well, I'm working on it, besides, where's your facial hair? Naruto grabbed Percy's hand forcing it to his chin, right there, he said. Percy felt the blonde's chin in his face fell. He felt some hair on his chin, it's blonde so you can't see it. Percy then slowly took back his hand with a pout obviously becoming more and more jealous of Naruto. Great, he was more athletic, good looking, muscular and had facial hair, what next? I'll take first watch, the raven haired teen told them. Grover sat down with his back pressed against a tree. Annabeth curled up in her sleeping bag and fell asleep instantly and Naruto sat beside her. Grover took off his flying shoes and placed them to the lowest bough of the tree and stared up at the night sky. Percy took his seat on the ground quietly but said to the two, go ahead and sleep guys. I'll wake you if there's any trouble. Grover nodded but didn't close his eyes. Naruto just shrugged his shoulders staring at the dirt that covered the ground, he remembered doing things like this during his squad years. Camping out and taking watches. It was fun. Except then he didn't keep secrets from his friends. He rubbed his bandaged hand biting his lower lip. Percy watched Annabeth sleep with an almost peaceful look crossing over her face, seeing that made a small smile tug at his lips, and a warmth of happiness tugged at his heart. He thought she was pretty and smart, but that doesn't mean he likes her. He was a little jealous when Naruto looked to be flirting with her sometimes, but that didn't mean he liked her. His bright green eyes turned a darker shade when Annabeth shivered in her sleep and Naruto laid down beside her wrapping his arms around her to warm her up some and it worked since she stopped and sighed blissfully nuzzling her head in Naruto's chest. He sat his chin on the top of her head still not sleeping. Percy's fists clenched in anger at seeing that. That should be him cuddling next to Annabeth. Warming her up. Damn Naruto. Grover sensed his best friend's jealousy towards Naruto and decided to help. It makes me sad, Percy. That got Percy's attention so he asked, the fact that you signed up for this dumbass quest? No this makes me sad, he pointed at all the trash with a depressed look, and the sky. I mean you can't even see the stars. They polluted the sky. This is definitely a bad time to be a satyr. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess you'd be an environmentalist. Both Grover and Naruto glared at Percy who flinched some at that. Only a human wouldn't be, the satyr said, your species is clogging up the world so fast. Oh, you know what? Forget I said anything. It's useless to lecture a human. At this rate, I'll never find Pan. Pam? Like that cooking spray? Dude you know you can just get it at the store, right? Jackson you are such a kelp for brains, Naruto whispered angrily. He didn't want to wake Annabeth up, Pan, son of Hermes, god of the wild. Yeah. That's the main reason why I have to get my searcher's license. Tell me about the search, Percy said. Grover eyed him cautiously as if he were afraid Percy would make fun of him. Before Naruto could even listen to Grover talk about the search, his blue eyes turned golden and they closed shut. His eyes snapped wide open. Naruto tried to gasp but a sound wasn't heard. He noticed this and tried to talk but he heard no words. Well, screaming didn't even help, he didn't hear it. He stood in a dark cavern before a gaping pit. Gray mist creatures churned all around him whispering rags of smoke. He knew these creatures were undead. This place. He remembered it. This was his home, Tartarus. He's never been out of the pit before, seeing it like this made him. Well, shiver. That would have been a long and painful fall if he somehow stumbled in. The spirits of the undead tugged, pulled at his clothes trying to pull him in, but a stronger force was bringing him to the very edge of the chasm. The pit yawned, it was full of darkness. Just like he remembered, except the light from his father's coffin lit up the pit. He felt a familiar dark and evil aura blow over his entire body. My son, echoed the cold and dark voice, so young, so innocent, so gullible. I trusted you for crying out loud. And you decided to betray me like the others? 
for shame, my son. Naruto tried to talk but nothing came out, so he said inside his head, I, I didn't betray you, father, I swear. The voice chuckled darkly. Now you lie? It demanded, I gave you a mission and you fail it in me. I should obliterate you right where you stand. You are the Titan Prince. The Olympians are our enemy. Do you want to be a traitor to your own kind? Naruto swallowed his throat that went dry quickly, and no, father. I want to make you proud. He thought softly, but, don't you think this may be wrong? What if the Olympians aren't that bad? Zeus is a great asshole, yeah, but, Hestia, big sister Hestia is so nice and caring, and nice. I've given up on you, boy, the voice snarled harshly. Hearing that made Naruto's blue eyes widened in shock, I knew you'd be too soft. A disappointment. When I return to full power soon, I will kill you. I have no love for you anymore. Naruto felt like he wanted to just fall into the pit and die a painful death, he wanted all this pain and hurt to be taken away. But, Naruto's eyes glinted with hope. That's what he definitely needed right now, if you can bring me the Master Bolt. I may change my mind about you, boy. Really? Naruto thought. But then he realized something and frowned, no not the bolt, father. Let me finish the mission. Take out on the inside. Please. I won't fail you this time, I promise. You'd better not, boy. Once last chance, and that's all. No. The dead whispered making the blonde frown slightly, a trap, boy. It is a trap. Do not listen. Wake. Wake now boy. He felt someone shaking him out of his slumber. His eyes cracked open, only to be blinded by daylight. Naruto stretched and yawned. The dream still drifting through his mind, he didn't know what to do. Part of him said to do it while the other said, This isn't you, he had to focus right now. So dumb thoughts like that would get in the way. A shadowy figure soon stood over him. He squinted his eyes and saw that it was Annabeth. Well, she said, the zombie lives. Naruto frowned at her but his eyebrows rose in curiosity at seeing her hiding a small blush around her cheeks. He sat up looking over at Percy who was beginning to wake up as well and asked Annabeth, how long was I asleep? He rubbed his face and wiped the drool off from the corner of his mouth. Long enough for me to cook breakfast, she tossed them both bags of nacho flavored corn chips from Auntie M's snack bar, oh, and, Grover went exploring. Look, he found a friend. Naruto looked over to Grover who was sitting cross-legged on a blanket holding, something pink and fuzzy in his arms. Naruto studied the thing more than realized it was a pink poodle that was very dirty. He crawled over to Grover and scratched the dog behind its ear earning a pant from it. He smiled a little scratching more, ah, you poor doggy. What happened to you? What horrible creature would do such a thing to a pretty doggy? The poodle leaned up to the blonde's face and licked his whiskered cheek. He grinned but the poodle stopped to growl at Percy and yap at him suspiciously. Grover patted the poodle's head and told it, no, he's not. Percy blinked. What the, are you guys, talking to that thing? The poodle growled and Naruto glared at Percy continuing to scratch the poodle. Shish, shish, don't worry, doggy. He's just jealous, he reassured his new poodle friend who nodded in agreement. This thing, Grover warned, is our ticket west, so please be nice to him. Hold on, you can talk to animals? Grover ignored the question. Percy and Naruto, meet Gladiola. Gladiola meet Percy and Naruto. Hello there Gladiola, Naruto greeted the poodle who barked at him nicely and licked his cheek. Percy looked at Annabeth, hoping she would crack up at the joke they were pulling on him, but she was ing deadly serious. I'm not saying, hello, to a poodle. And it's pink too, he said, so forget it. Percy. Annabeth said, I said hello to the poodle. Naruto said hello to the poodle. So you say hello to the poodle. The poodle paused licking Naruto's face to growl at Percy who sighed in defeat, hello Gladiola. Grover then explained that he'd come across Gladiola in the woods and they struck a conversation. The poodle, Gladiola, had ran away from a rich local family, who'd post a $200 reward for his return. Gladiola didn't really want to go back to his family but he was willing to do it if it meant helping Grover which Naruto thought was a brave thing to do. How does Gladiola know about the reward? Percy asked. Um, he read the signs, Grover said as if it were obvious, duh. Percy deadpanned, oh, yeah, of course, how silly of me. 
So, we return Gladiola. Annabeth explained in her best strategy voice that Percy thought was, cute, but muttered it, only to be heard by Naruto who sent him a glare, we get the money, and we buy tickets to Los Angeles. Simple. Naruto knitted his brows. But, wait a sec, I have 200 mortal dollars. We could have just used that. Annabeth nodded. True, but we should keep that just in case for emergencies. Naruto stared down at the ground thinking about his dream or whatever that was. He then realized something. A dream? It could have just been a dumb dream all this time. He was worrying for nothing. But, what if it wasn't a dream? What if that was real? Nah, it couldn't have been real. He was spazzing out for nothing. But he did think about what awaited him in the west. In the corner of his eye, Percy was thinking the same thing. Not another bus. Percy said warily and Naruto nodded in agreement. They did not need to meet any other monsters. You're right about that. Annabeth agreed in a mutter. She pointed downhill at some tracks they weren't able to see in the night, there's an Amtrak station half a mile that way. According to Gladiola, the train will be leaving at noon, so we better go now. The quartet got to their feet with nods and began to walk forward. The daughter of Athena pulled Naruto away from the group surprising him. She dragged him behind a tree with her arms folded over her chest with pursed lips. What? He said confused why she dragged him away from the others. Last night you. I was having a nightmare about something, she mumbled not meeting his eyes, and when I woke up. Dot you were holding me. I wanted to punch you for doing that but, I liked it. So thank you for doing that. You helped me sleep. So thanks. He noticed the blush on her cheeks and felt tons of emotions and feelings in his body. Um, uh, no problem. I was just worried about you is all. I care about you a lot, ya yeah, know. Her head whipped up with wide eyes and she whispered, really? His blue eyes fixed on her gray eyes. His orbs scanned her body, she was beautiful but she was younger than him. He loved her hair and eyes, gods. Those eyes he would sometimes get lost in. She was like a princess, a dangerous and intelligent one that is. Those feelings? What did they mean? He knew that Percy had a crush on her. He saw the way Percy looked at her. Yeah. Naruto whispered, yeah. M maybe I should tell you. Tell me what? About. Dot how I feel, Naruto told her. She caught her breath when he walked up to her. He thought the fact that he was taller than her was a little funny. He didn't meet her eyes once more but stared at the ground. I don't understand how I'm feeling about you, Annie. And I'm pretty sure I shouldn't be on the list of guys you like. Annabeth blushed. What do you mean? Naruto's hand brushed against hers and he told her, You like Luke, Dot and Percy, don't you? Annabeth sputtered with a frown. W what? Me? Like Percy? That's the funniest thing I've heard all day. Naruto narrowed his eyes at his fellow blonde, Don't deny it, he said, I know you like him. I see the way you look at him, and I see the way he looks at you. But you're all caught up on Luke to even notice your feelings for Waterhead. Annabeth. Luke doesn't like you. Even I can tell that he. Shut up. She shoved him away from her. Before she could run off to the others he grabbed her wrist and pulled her to his chest. Before she could punch him he cupped both sides of her face bringing it closer to his. Her gray orbs widened at his actions. She was on her tippy toes staring at his lips and eyes. His breath tickled her lips. W what are you doing? She asked quietly and Naruto swallowed wanting to connect his lips to hers. But he held himself back for many reasons. But he didn't let go of Annabeth's face all he did was just stare into those intense gray eyes he loved so much. Annabeth. I. Naruto whispered softly. Is this how you feel about me? Annabeth asked him, is it? Tell me, please? Naruto hesitated but nodded lightly, he then shook his head confusing her. Yes. No. I don't know, he told her, all I know is, you'll have to wait until I sort my feelings out, okay? She swallowed but nodded understanding. His hands dropped down from her cheeks to his sides, she backed away from him staring at the ground quietly, I'll watch over you, Annie. I promise. Annabeth stared at him with a small frown, she didn't need anyone to protect her, but, hearing him say it made her say, thank you, and walk up to him to plant a kiss on his cheek before running off to the others. Naruto watched her leave with a small blush and his hand touched the cheek she kissed. He smiled warmly and caught up with the others wearing a grin. A certain goddess of love squealed with excitement as she watched Naruto and the others on the quest using her magic mirror. 
The whole Naruto and Annabeth thing spun around in her kind. She sighed out blissfully. Told you I would make your love life difficult, Naruto. Two days. They spent two days on the Amtrak train heading west through hills, over rivers and past amber waves of grain. Nah, they didn't get attacked once. But they did indeed keep their guard up at all times. Even in their sleep. Percy had to try and keep a low profile because flyers with his face on it were plastered everywhere. There was even pictures of him on the front pages of the East Coast newspaper. The Trenton Register News had a picture that the tourist from the bus had taken. Percy had a wild look in his eye, Naruto had a smug look on, Grover had a scared expression and Annabeth had a worried look while chewing on her bottom lip. The caption read. 16-year-old, Percy Jackson, wanted for questioning in the Long Island disappearance of his mother two weeks ago, is shown here fleeing from the bus where he accosted several elderly passengers. The bus exploded on an East New Jersey roadside shortly after Jackson fled the scene. Based on eyewitness accounts, police believe the boy may be traveling with two teenage accomplices. His stepfather, Gabe Ugliano, has offered a cash reward for information leading to his capture. Naruto blinked and Percy's eyes turned small. Annabeth placed a reassuring hand on his shoulder. Don't worry, she told him, mortal police could never find us. Trust me. The weird thing in saying that was, well, she didn't sound so sure. You don't sound so sure there, Naruto said to her, she bit her lip and faintly blushed looking away from him. Ever since that little, oh, I love you but I'm not sure if I really do love you, thing between Annabeth and Naruto, they've been kind of awkward around each other. Percy and Grover have been wondering what the heck was wrong with them. Uh, um, oh, just be quiet. She mumbled loud enough for him to hear. And when he did hear it he pouted slightly at her. Annabeth and Sakura would totally be the best of friends. Percy looked at Naruto and whispered to him, Hey, what's up with you and Annabeth? Naruto knitted his brows and stared out the window not meeting Percy's eyes. Nothing, he said simply, we're good. Absolutely good. Maybe you two should talk and get together. Huh, what do you mean by that? I dunno, I never make sense. Oh, you know what else doesn't make sense? Naruto asked Percy who raised his brows, girls and love. I mean, we're guys, right? We don't understand them. Why are you in love with some guy that doesn't even seem to feel the same way and possibly never will? You're going to waste your time dealing with the guy, anyways. Just go for guy one, who isn't even understanding his feelings for you because you're all lovey devey with different guys. Or how about guy two? the kelp for brains idiot who's just a barnacle brain for not already asking her out. If you like her then date her. It's logic for crying out loud. And they say I'm dense. Percy stared at the blonde then blinked confusedly. What was all that about? Who was he talking about? Annabeth, perhaps, maybe, Naruto and Annabeth have been acting pretty strange around each other. His heart skipped a beat and a lopsided grin splattered on his lips thinking. What if Naruto doesn't like Annabeth anymore? Maybe he has a shot to getting Annabeth after all. Uh, ahem, ahem, not that he cares. The rest of the day, Naruto just stayed quiet or fell asleep snoring with his mouth open wide, Percy paced the length of the bus because, you know, his ADHD was getting to him or just simply staring out the windows. He even saw a family of centaurs galloping across a wheat field with their bows ready as they hunted their soon-to-be lunch. The little boy centaur caught Percy's eye and waved at him with a friendly smile. Percy looked around to see if the mortals saw what he was seeing. But they didn't one. Because of the mist and two, their heads were buried in either laptops, books or magazines. Another time, Percy even saw something huge moving through the woods. He could have sworn it was a lion, but there weren't any lions living wild in America. The lion was the size of a hummer. Its fur glinted gold as the evening light hit it, then it jumped through the trees and was gone in an instant. Their reward money for returning Gladiola was enough to purchase tickets as far as Denver. They couldn't get berths in the sleeper car, so they had to just doze off in their seats like Naruto was demonstrating. Percy's neck got stiff and tried his very best not to drool since Naruto was on his left side and Annabeth was on his right. Plus, her head fell on his shoulder causing him to have a faint blush cover his tan cheeks. She snuggled against his shoulder and he was trying to figure out if he should wrap his arm around her or not. 
Percy sighed hoping she wouldn't hit him for doing this, but he s his arm around her shoulders bringing her closer to him. Annabeth sighed dreamily in her sleep as she snuggled closer to his body, he cheered quietly so he wouldn't wake her. Take that, Naruto. It was kind of hard for Percy to go to sleep though, Grover kept bleeding and snoring keeping him up. Annabeth started to wake up and flushed heavily when she woke up cuddling next to Percy who flushed as well trying to explain that he was just comforting her. Before an argument could start, Grover shuffled his feet er, hoofs, on the floor and his fake feet fell off. The two awake members of the quest scrambled to put his feet back on before the other passengers noticed. So, um, Annabeth asked, sitting back up in her seat after readjusting Grover's sneaker, who wants your help? She didn't want to continue that argument about her falling asleep on Percy's shoulder then they end up cuddling or snuggling or whatever the hell they did. A blush was still remaining on her cheeks though. Percy looked at her in mild confusion. What are you talking about? When you were asleep, you were mumbling, I won't help you no matter what you say. Who were you dreaming about? He looked at her, reluctant to say anything. What would she say if he told her such a thing? Would she think he was crazy? It was probably the second time he dreamed about that cold, evil voice from that dark pit. That voice and pit bothered him so much that he finally told her. After telling Annabeth, she seemed to have a serious and thoughtful look on her face like every child of Athena wore all the time. Annabeth was quiet for such a long time that it scared Percy a little. He was also trying to think of what was going on inside that big brain of hers. I know Hades, and that isn't him. Believe me. If it was him for sure, then he'd be on a black throne and he never laughs. But he offered my mother for trade. Who else could do that Annabeth? Er, I mean, well, if he meant, help me rise from the underworld, then that means he wants a war with the other Olympians. But why would he tell you to bring him the master bolt when he has it in his possession? Percy bit his bottom lip that tasted like seawater, normally, other people would probably gag by tasting seawater but he didn't since he's technically the son of the sea. So for him it was normal, but he wished that he knew what the answer was. The Furies on the bus were searching for the bolt, right? He thought maybe Grover sensed his emotions because he snorted in his sleep and mumbled something about vegetables and enchiladas then turned his head. Naruto snored a little louder but stopped when he sneezed then turned his head snoring lighter. Percy caught Annabeth staring at Naruto's handsome, cute sleeping face after readjusting Grover's cap so it covered his horns. He suddenly felt that jealousy emotion all over again that he glared holes in the back of Naruto's head. Why did she even like Naruto? Luke, he can see, kind of, okay. He felt jealous of Luke as well since Annabeth liked him too. This was so unfair, he felt like a loser all over again. What? He looked up at Annabeth who was raising her brows at him. He just realized that he was glaring at Naruto for too long. And nothing. Seriously, Percy, what is it? She demanded. It's n and nothing, okay. Well, maybe it is. Dot but. Annabeth studied his face and remembered what Naruto told her. Percy liked her too. A faint blush formed on her cheeks making Percy arch a brow. It's about me, isn't it? Because you like me, she mumbled and Percy's eyes widened. How did she know? No, how did she find out? He has to save himself. He has to. Percy scoffed, me, like you, never in a million years. Never ever, nope, I'd never have a crush on you. That's funny, me liking you when our parents hate each other and all. Ha, huh. yeah, yeah, he trailed off weakly shooting the blonde beauty a weak and nervous smile. She frowned at him and he swallowed, oh, I am so screwed, he thought. That's good. A relief then, Annabeth said, because Naruto told me that you liked me, eh and you do don't you? Her brain began to turn its gears and she now knew that he was lying. Who can she blame for her big brain? Athena. Percy grew nervous. He knew that Annabeth liked Naruto and he probably liked her back, probably. Hell no, he did like her, in love with her maybe. No, Percy couldn't lose Annabeth to that good-looking bastard of a blonde. Quote dot dot dot. Er, yeah, he admitted, I really, really like you. But I understand if you don't. You like Naruto instead of me. I get it, even though his heart was about to get broken into millions of pieces, he may as well be truthful about how he felt about her, right? 
Annabeth didn't know what the to say. She was surprised. She was hoping that she would be wrong but she wasn't. Percy really did like her. And she liked him too but just didn't know how to tell him. Hearing him admit his feelings for her made her heart do a little happy tap dance. I'm not sure about my feelings yet, she admitted to him. His eyes widened, not the answer he was expecting. To be honest, I don't know how I feel or what I'm feeling. Yes, I like Luke and I like Naruto. But you, gods, you, it seems like I have feelings for you the most. Percy now wore a victorious grin on his tan lips. Take that Naruto. But, hearing that one word made Percy's entire happy world come crashing down on top of him, I like Naruto just as much as I like you. Now Naruto was his romantic rival. That's just ing great really. Just great. But somehow he built up the courage to, to take Annabeth's hand into his so that now they could hold hands. He shot her a warm smile that pulled and tugged at her heart. I'll be here. He whispered to her staring into those gray eyes that got him lovestruck and confused, waiting. Waiting for you to make your choice, okay. Because that's how much I like you, Annabeth. But for now, let's focus on the quest, all right. Now, that, brought a small smile to Annabeth's lips as she leaned her head on his shoulder holding his hand tighter. She sighed out, right. So they talked about her past and they talked about his past. Everything was okay but they just wished that they weren't teenagers. Why? Because this stage of life dealt with tons of feelings and love. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.